Time for some more of that fresh, hot, double XP. Well, double battle pass of XP. Who cares about regular XP, am I right? Anyways, be sure to like the video. Subscribing is cool. I mean, you know, if you've got a moment, not too busy. Consider becoming a channel member. Channel... Well, there's the Discord if you want the stream alerts, and there's the uh, Patreon option if you prefer that instead of a uh, channel membership. Oh, jeez. And the Amazon store affiliate link if you're grabbing anything on there. Use the link in the video description. Okay, that guy got away. Dun, 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 dun. So anyway, Hard Point is back, which I love, but like, I don't know if we're going to be able to play like a lot of Horde Point. Cause it's there's only a few maps and it's all these like contaminated maps and it's like I like the contaminated maps, but like I don't want to just keep playing like the same or levels over and over again. Cause the Horde Point used to have like a bunch of maps in rotation, and now it's literally just four levels I think, which thematically fit, but a little little bit of a bummer, just because I like the map variation a bit more, especially since we have so many maps in this game. And you know what? I was on a crazy good uh, streak right off the bat. I should have kept trying to push that further. Sucks to suck. Zombies are supposed to attack that person and help me. Why are they doing that? 30 FPS? Ah, uh, you talk about like Hellblade? Yeah, 30 FPS on that game is uh, a, a travesty. It's a bit of a joke. Like, they, they're doing that thing that they always do where they're like, oh, it's more cinematic. And it's like, you're making a game, not a movie. <laughs> Even the cinematic PlayStation games run at 60 FPS, and I know it's UE5, and I know it's super demanding, but at least give us a 40 FPS mode. It's a total fair complaint from people being mad that Xbox games can't, they can't even reach 30 FPS. That's the thing, is like, technically the Xbox games, they come out late, they come out buggy, and... They, they never hit performance levels. So you can go back to the before the Series X launch, the head of marketing, Greenberg, there for Xbox. He said the target this gen is 4K60. And they... I don't even think they've hit that before. Maybe for Fultz, I guess, counts? They were already doing that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Was, where did they get in that last gen with... With the 1X? I'm trying to think if they were achieving 4K60 with the 1X on, so like... Motorsport like seven. Yeah, they were, weren't they? Yeah. No, no it's, it's it's just it's disappointing. The the whole gen is a joke for Xbox. It's it's a wash. Yeah. Anyways, it is what it is. Let's play some COD and enjoy some double battle pass XP. It's actually incredible to be at a point where Xbox has, like, lost and seemingly, like, given up, and they now own, like, Call of Duty and everything. It's crazy. I... It's crazy. But that's life. None of it makes sense, and you're just along for the ride. Anyways, pretty busy day. I did my taxes. Yeah, that was, that was fun. This was, was a little traumatizing. I have to, I have to pay a, a lot to the, the good old government of Canada, which I would be fine doing, but I feel like we don't really get much anymore from the country, and yeah, I don't know, it's just part of life, I guess. <sighs> and then I went and visited, because uh, I wanted to kind of mention this in the stream earlier on, for people be watching uh, our channel pal there, Mitchell, he's doing the world's longest hockey game thing. It's like a Guinness record. It's, it's a charity thing. They do it to raise money for the Alberta Children's Hospital, which is great. So I was there because they did the opening night tonight. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's skating a few hours. He was, he was doing, like, one shift and he was, like, dying. And I got to see all of uh, Mitchell's family again. Some of them I hadn't seen since, like, pre-pre-COVID, even, like, long before COVID. I was like, holy... But, uh, 
Yeah, it was kind of funny, because I, I showed a video of, of, of Mitchell skating to his, his grandmother that was there. And she's like, oh, is that in slow motion? I was like, no. <laughs> he's like texting me on the ice, or from like the box in between shifts. He's like, I'm dying. I'm like, I got 22 more days. <laughs> yeah, they, I think they had to skate for 22 days. I'm like, dude, it just, it just started. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you liked the videos. I, I work tirelessly at them, what can I say? Is this my first match of the stream? Yeah, that was that was the first match. That was match number one. I've been doing some off time work between stuff, and I got uh, I got battle pass tokens. <gasps> okay. So I was building this way, and then I was like, oh, it's classified, so I actually can't build that way. So I guess I'm gonna start mining downwards and. Uh, yeah, I guess we gotta mine downwards and around. I don't like that they're switching things up with the battle pass again and making us kind of mine awkwardly around. But this is the fastest progression I've ever had for a battle pass. I think it's because the ridiculous amount of XP, and if you have people in your group, you earn more XP. So hopefully some people join up early or later on throughout the stream, and then we get more XP multipliers. But yeah, thirty-five percent done the battle pass already. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Spore yard? Sure. So we'll play some Horde Point and then we'll play regular rotation just because I don't want to deal with the weird looking maps all night. Otherwise, I'd literally play Horde Point all night, but yeah. Which COD? Call of Duty 4 is the best one. I don't know. I think 30 FPS is fine if we were on like a last gen console. I expect more out of these consoles. They're supposed to be 4K 60 machines. 30 FPS, if that's your primary mode, okay, but you should have secondary modes for other features, especially a first-party Xbox game. They need to demand better out of their developers. They need to do better. Or, like, literally, actually, at this point from Xbox, I'm just hoping for, like, the bare minimum in, like, any way or form that they can. Because Xbox can't literally deliver on, like, the bare minimum. And, uh, yeah. It's, it's no wonder that nobody wants to buy the platform. They... They've pissed away every advantage they've ever had. And I'm just indifferent towards it. <laughs> Very indifferent towards it. Oh, look, there we go. Double Battle Pass XP. Have we ever had triple XP? Like in the modern COD era, has that ever been a thing? Ah, damn it. Well, that's not a good start. Because it's funny, in Gears, you get to points where it's like 22 times XP, which is kind of funny. Yeah, I've already died twice. It's ridiculous. I doth not like this. But anyways, uh, in general, a uh, best of luck to Mitchell and his, his skating across these 22 days. I, gotta, I don't know if you guys know how hard it is, but like, you know, playing hockey for like 22 days straight is like pretty grueling. Pretty grueling. So I, I, I wish them the best on their, I guess, uh, raising goals, like their donation goals, and, uh, you know, finishing, I guess. I was also disappointed they didn't have the giant inflatable arm man up. Last time they did this, which was like two years ago the giant inflatable arm man because you know there's, there's nobody there watching at like 3 a.m. in the morning so they just have the giant inflatable arm man. Do I like Lego games? Yeah they're great. UE5 is incredibly demanding. Yes Unreal Engine 5 is an incredibly demanding engine. Uh, these consoles are just getting crippled by it. It still doesn't hurt to do a 40 FPS mode. Or design around offering 60 FPS. Like you can fundamentally design around offering that sort of thing for people. Because I think players demand it. Like I'm, huh, like if if I didn't have to do videos and reviews and stuff, I would honestly for Hellblade, I would just skip Xbox entirely and I would just play it on my PC. So that I can have 60 FPS. I'm just like tired of not getting it. So that's three now, right? Starfield, Redfall, and uh, Hellblade all launching at 30 FPS. 
For a 4K60 machine, their first party can't deliver that either. It's just frustrating, you know, you want you want high frame rate games. Well, actually, you know what? Not even high frame rate games, standard frame rate games, which I think is 60 FPS in this area. You know, like, the Series S I get, but the Series X is like, come on. Oh, that was a pretty good streak. Yeah. What's up? Yeah, just answering the Call of Duty. Been a while, Skull. How you doing? I think you were actually at the beginning of the other stream, weren't you? Yeah. Is the hockey game being streamed? It is. Yes, yes. The the hockey game is being streamed. I have a link for it in the Discord. I actually just posted it before we started streaming. Uh, there's no sound or anything. And, uh, yeah, you can watch it, the whole thing. I think it has to be streamed for Guinness reasons or something, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's live, so you can watch it at any point. Yeah, I was there for a couple hours or whatever, and then came back, and I think it was a couple hours. I don't know, I was, I was there for a bit, I came back, and, uh, watched a little bit of stream through on it. But yeah, you can watch it live. It's like a strangely dark camera, I don't know why, because like I was there and it was like much better in Liverpool Arena, but then yeah, the webcam is like kinda Well it's not a webcam, it's an actual camera that's set up, but it's kinda dark. Which is odd. But uh yeah, you can watch the guy skate for like twenty-two days straight. This is a lot of hockey. You know, it's for the kids, so... Hmm, it's a good thing. Nah, nah, it's just it's funny seeing the PlayStation first party games all launching with like... You know, four plus <laughs> graphic options and Xbox. They're like, you get one, it targets 30 FPS. It doesn't hit 30 FPS. It's buggy, it's broken. It'll probably crash a lot, but enjoy! And, yeah, and that's after they've been delayed, like, a year or two. It's just sad. Get out of here, giant, weird, ugly robot thing. Or not robot, alien monster thing. I don't like it. Yeah, anyways, let's let's not talk about Xbox more. It's, it's, it's over. It's, it's fine, but yeah, it's, it's over. Wow, we got smoked this game. 250? That sucks. Damn. Our score got smoked on that one. Anyways, yeah, I, I, I get tired of talking about the Xbox. Oof. Oof. Yeah, no, it's, it's cool, like, literally, the technology of today, where you can do, like, a full thing. Because I was sitting there, and I was like... It would have been really cool if the phones had cameras like we do now back in the day. Because, like, I could have had all these cool shots and stuff of when I was playing hockey. I have some little bits of video, but not much. And some photos, but not much. But, like, I was, I was watching, like, Mitchell play there, and I was doing, like, full 4K 60 video of him in slow motion. With him skating around and stuff, and I was like, that's really cool. And it looks really good, and it's super clean, and, yeah. Kind of neat. Snoop Dogg. Two. He's a cooler Snoop. He's a Snoop Dogg with attitude. Oh, shizzle, yo. Has Sea of Thieves always been under 20 FPS? Uh, yeah, they did a, a current gen update, so Sea of Thieves on Xbox is uh, 1080, 120, and 4K 60, I think? From what I remember, roughly? I, I did a video on it, and it was like two or three years ago. Yeah. Two or three years ago. Hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Well, Xbox, some of their studios do in-engine stuff. I mean, look at Halo. It runs at 4K 60 with performance drops like crazy. Yeah. Slip space engine. What a joke that was, right? Yeah. Well, UE5 is just demanding overall. It's, it's software that's far beyond the capabilities of the hardware we have.
This music, like the menu music, is really throwing me off. I don't know if I like it or I'm just kind of iffy towards it. But yeah, I really didn't get much done today. I was, I guess, just distracted, I suppose. Yeah. But I'm like, we wouldn't do COD normally so quickly, but because it's like, you know, we got the free trial, I think double XP last till then, and I'm just like, burning through this battle pass as quickly as humanly possible. Ooh, the Godzilla event's up. What do we unlock? The journey sticker? I'm looking for a double battle pass XP. I don't- that's what I want. I don't care about any of the other stuff. Double battle XP. Double, double battle pass XP is what I'm after. Did they add the new characters to the store? Chimo. Where's, uh, where's Godzilla? Did they not add Godzilla yet? Still no Godzilla? Hmm. Heretic? Okay, that's kind of funny. Yeah, where's where's Cheech and Chong and uh, Godzilla and stuff? They're they're supposed to be in this game. A VR headset. Oh, that's that's nice. You know what else is nice, guys? Like in the stream. <gasps> Subscribe and great donations. Cool. Consider becoming channel member. Channel member gifted the uh, Patreon option. The Discord for stream alerts, chatter, and okay times. There's also an Amazon store affiliate link if you grab anything on there. And GamerHeadquarters.com. I write stuff on my site. Sometimes, but not enough. I'm a busy guy, what can I say? Take more than that to cream my corn. Anyways, I was kind of glad just to get the taxes out of the way. Because I keep sitting there being like, oh, I need to do this, oh, I need to do this. It's like, they've been ready for weeks, but I have to like, you know, it, it takes time to input them into the machine and stuff. The machine. It's a whole process. Yeah, anyways. Glad to be done it. Yeah, you get, you get so busy, you know, doing... Well, I get so busy doing all the work I do. I really need to find some more time for like, the, the dating game and stuff. You know, sometimes I like I'll, I'll I'll be lying in bed and I'll be like, oh, I didn't spend any time doing that today, and I'm like, I need to get better at allocating time for that. Ugh. I'm only getting older, you know. My best years are behind me. Although I think I would have been better suited off being like married a lot younger. It would have been a lot easier going. This whole process, meeting people, doing stuff, uh, you know, they waste your time, it's, it's a ter terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. Hmm. Damn. Ubisoft forwards? Nah, I, I don't even get up for the Ubisoft forwards. The Discord link in the stream is invalid. Oh, god damn it! really? Okay. Well, thanks for letting me know. I'm surprised no one else has mentioned that. I'll have to update it. Thank you. Shouldn't that link work forever? I thought that was a forever link. Hmm. That's actually so weird. I thought that was a forever link, because that's in, like, all the videos, that link. Is there a way to refresh that link? I wonder if Discord redid something or other. That's terrible, man. I'll have to test it and play it with it after the stream's done, I guess. Because then I'll have to update... Well, I'm not going to update all the videos, but I'll have to update future stuff, I guess. Because, you know, obviously, if people want to join the Discord, the link thing needs to work. Obviously. Yeah, but uh, Mitchell, he's, he's on dark green. He's, he's number two. He's, he's skating his heart out. Hmm. Crazy. 
my favorite Ninja Turtle, uh, Leonardo, I guess, the blue one, that Steam will come to Xbox. Uh, I'm in the boat of it's unlikely. I mean, I went over that in my video today. Yeah. That was the whole point of the video t what today, was so that I don't have to keep answering that question because it keeps popping up so often. Very popular video. I think I'm going to do more takes on things videos going forward. Considering how popular that was, I was a little surprised. Yeah. That was basically like a stream topical thing. I think I'm gonna start taking things in the streams that get asked a lot and turning them into videos. Makes, makes sense, I think. Yeah. Am I like, well, you know, I'm, I'm pretty old. You know, my, my best days are behind me. I just, I just happen to look young, you know. Maybe it's good jeans. Maybe it's bug snacks. It's, it's hard to say. Maybe it's a heart of gold. Or maybe it's frosted flakes. There, right. I can't believe I interviewed Tony the Tiger. That's so crazy. Yeah, I interviewed the guy who does uh, the voice of Sniper Elite. Carl Fairburn, like that character. And it's like, I'm Clark Hill. He uh, voiced Tony the Tiger for 20 years. 20 years! My whole youth, he was, he was Tony the Tiger. I'm like, my blood. Yeah. I have an extra B at the end there. Oh. Well, I will take a look at that. Thank you. That's weird that that happened. I'll have to investigate it. See, sometimes I set these things up and I don't think about them because they're just supposed to work. And then, you know, unless somebody lets me know, I don't know. Yeah, across the videos, it's just supposed to be something that's like pretty standardized. I try to automate everything I can, you know, so that it cuts down on my work time. Leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. I think they made these things tougher. It's eating bullets like it's nothing. We're not even at the position now we lost, damn it. Ugh. Anyways, I appreciate the note, man. It helps me out. But yeah, basically that link to the hockey game will work for all the whole time through. Kind of debating. We got Mitchell there. He's going to be a goalie certain nights, but at like, uh, <laughs> like early morning, I'm like, oh, I could finish the stream and go drive all the way out in the middle of the country to go and you know, see him play as a goalie, which would be funny. My favorite thing to do is to see them, like, halfway through because they start getting more and more like zombies. It's, it's kind of funny. You, get, you just get tuckered right out for, for skating for that long, you know. Should we put Skeletor back in rotation? I just can't handle him yelling grenade over and over again. It's aggravating. Reminds me of Saints Row this music. Burns online. What are you doing? Come join the game, yo. Answer the call of duty. All right, we'll do one more horde point, and then we'll go back in a regular rotation. Cause again, I just don't wanna. Like I'd play horde point all night, but I don't wanna sit there and play on like the four maps over and over again. Drive me bonkers, bonkers. A Gear 6 reveal? Yeah, this year should be the year. Finally. Can't wait to see how they end the Gears of War franchise for the second time. Because obviously Gears 3 was supposed to be the end, but you know. I'm sure Gears 6 will be good.
Yeah, I feel like I'm playing for Saints Row with this music. It's ridiculous. Oh, look, guys. Sherry's playing as Snoop Dogg. The dog. Yeah, in the Battle Pass, if you get the Super Duper Edition, you get Snoop Dogg as a dog. Pretty cool, eh? Pretty, pretty cool. Skeletor. He's cool, I just don't like him going, Grenade! Was it just me, or did that matchmaking take forever? The matchmaking is too long in this game. For how many people are playing at this? Like, it should be, like, instant. was there. Throwing grenades. How do they know? Taking effective fire. Popping a fresh man. Grenade. I just love the chaos of Ford Point where it's just like Zombies and people and shooting and craziness. I don't even mind the contaminated maps, but there's just not enough levels in this game mode. I think they're doing this just as like a promotional thing because it's a free trial weekend to try to get people to buy it, being like, oh look, they got this cool zombies mode. I think that's what they're doing. Yeah. Am I gonna rot watch WrestleMania? I, I don't really, uh, I, I don't watch wrestling, so I, I, I won't be watching it, sorry. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I'm not into that. I play the video game once a year, but I, I don't watch any uh, WrestleMania or WWE stuff. It's not really my thing. My cousin was really into it when I was growing up, but... Yeah, I don't know. Not Fry. But there are a lot of people in the Discord that do absolutely love it. Been a literal discussion piece. Hmm. Modern Warfare One. What about it? We're off to a decent start at this match. It's tied. That's where the kills go in. No complaints. Anyways, we're in a, a bit of an odd time. I, I don't have much of a, a stream scheduling going because there's not really any big new releases. It was really, really busy for like a couple weeks straight there, and now it's kind of like. I don't specifically have anything new I'm working on, but I'm still behind on stuff, which is funny. I don't think the zombie can register that I'm beside it. Oh no, it, it knows I'm here. It was just broken, okay. Can you die, Mr. Big Zombie? Really, I shot it with my other guns, and it didn't die, and then I pull out the LMG and it falls apart? What is that, like a, a zombie slaying LMG or something? Like, come on. Ridiculous. Yeah, I just hope everybody's having a, a lovely start to their... Is it the weekend? Yeah, I think it's the weekend. Because it's closed? No, you can play Modern Warfare 1 still. It's just uh, that one can be buggy for some people, but it still works fine. I'm sorry, I, I don't specifically go out of my way to retest games for individual people. I, I don't do that. 
but there's no reason it should work. I just know that one there are some bugs involved with it because of what they did with the, the war zone. But you should be able to get it working fine. So, I mean, I'd, I'd be sitting here all day testing out, like... Like, again, like, I'm not tech support for Xbox, right? Like, you know, if there's a question or something, I can help you with it, I don't mind. But, like, I'm not here to, like, fix everybody's problems for everything, right? Like, that's... yeah. I'd be here all day if I got asked to test out each game. What are my settings? The default settings. Yeah, I use the default settings, but I have the 120 FPS on, which actually looks way better after the Season 3 update. Like, I think they bumped up the 120 hertz uh, resolution because it looks way cleaner. It looks so much cleaner. Yeah. This is it. What I think is worth 30, Dying Light 2 or Sekiro? Uh, well, if you like zombie games... I would say Dying Light. If you like Dark Souls games, uh, Sekiro would be your go-to. Sekiro, to me, is emotionally traumatizing to play, but some people love it. So, you know, it looks good, runs good on the Series X, I guess they both do. But I haven't been able to play Dying Light 2, so I guess I don't really fully know what that one is. But, uh, yeah, so I would, I would say, you know, if you like Dead Island or you like Dying Light 1, Dying Light 2 is a pretty safe, easy-going choice, or if you want to have some fun, that one's a good option. And if you want to be angry and play Dark Souls, uh, Sakura. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. Hope that helps on, on that. We do have, I did a video going over the Spring Sale, in case anybody's wondering. You can watch the end of it for the best deals being highlighted as well. My pick from the spring sale is Anshabara. It's a few dollars. It's a samurai bikini game from the 360 era. I fear it may be delisted someday, but for now you can get it for like a few dollars. That's my my recommendation of the sale. I just love how crazy this is. How did we get defeated? I'm in the position. What? How did we lose? I'm, I've am i captured and I'm holding the position. How are we losing? I'm in the position holding it. What does it even mean? That's ridiculous. Like I'm in the position holding it. I don't, like what? Hmm. Alright, we're gonna go to regular rotation. Just because I can't stomach playing the same four maps all day. Sadly. So hopefully they get rid of Horde Point just being on a few maps and, and open it up. Who was I playing at? Snoop Dogg there? I think I was playing at Snoop Dogg. Alright, Spawn, you're up. Keith David's you here to go. A good health spawn yet. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Another day, another gun I'll never use. Right on. Oh, now I got some more COD coins to mine. I'm feeling very confident on this battle pass. 36%. We've only done two streams of it. We're doing good. This is good progress. We got 10 COD coins last stream. Or not COD coins, sorry. 10 battle pass tokens last stream. Usually we only get five or six, but I guess when you play with others, it increases your allotment plus a double XP. It's great. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I hope everybody has a jam-packed, exciting weekend of whatnot. I've got the the gym. Final episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. You could say it's going to be a pretty wild weekend. Yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty crazy. Is 
that ghost the backdrop. All right, let's do this. <laughs> just playing as Snoop Dogg. I can't believe they made Snoop Dogg as a dog. It's it's kind of funny. Kind of funny. All right, let's go. Wait, what, what, what map is Rio? Oh, this is the one with the center thing? I think I can get away with using the Toke Force on I'm, I'm gonna use the Toke Force on this map. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, alright, let's go. And spawn too, nice. Yes, I, I, I wish I had more exciting points of, of chatter and reference for you guys. Uh, people are gonna have to start poking some suggestions in the stream chat, so I have something to go over. I blew all of my excitement doing the spring sale and the uh, the golfing yesterday, which was hilarious. Yeah, we get the. In case you missed the stream, we did the PGA uh, Tour Golf, EA Sports PGA Tour Golf stream, which uh, I missed so many shots. It was demoralizing emotionally. Contact! Contact! Need yeah, to heal. Tell him, Keith David. No. But anyways, yeah, I, I don't specifically have new games to stream this weekend, which is wild. So we might have some retro stuff pop up and maybe an odd obscure stream or something. I, I don't know yet. It's open for interpretation. Which is great. You never know what you're going to get now. It's a wild card weekend. It's kind of like during COVID, in the first couple of years of the Xbox, when there was like no new games releasing, so we were like, just playing old stuff, it's, yeah, it's gonna be like that again. Damn it. No problem, man. Sales and stuff, I'm happy to help you buy games for that. That's, that's my wheelhouse. Am I using my Stealth Ultra? Nah, I'm using this custom controller at the moment. I need to do my Stealth Ultra review. Look forward to that coming soon, that review. It's, uh, I'm overdue on it, honestly. I feel bad, because I'm sure Turtle Beach was expecting that a lot sooner, but uh, I, I'm busy. I do my best, and uh, yeah, I gotta, that review will, will be coming up soon. I just have to film it. Yeah, I just gotta film it. I'm debating if I want to, like, do the fancy review where I put on my blazer and stuff, or if I just want to do my sit-down casual review, which is easier, but... Yeah, usually for product reviews, I like to pop up on the blazer and go in front of my backdrop, which is still not fixed. I still haven't fixed my backdrop. I just want to be able to afford a house so I can customize things and have my backdrop all done and be able to work more, more effectively. Not work more, work more effectively is, is what I want to do. That's the right word. Yeah. Grinding for your ghost skins? What ghost skins? But the stealth ultra, it's, it's great. Yeah, it's really great. The four people double battle pass XP. The golfing stream was fun? It, it was fun, yeah. I, I don't think the I think the party XP thing is here to stay. I don't think it's a temporary thing. The double XP weekend will be over, I believe, in like after this weekend. But like, you know, it'll end when the free trial's done. But I, I think the grouping XP stuff will continue because it wouldn't make sense for them to just temporarily have that. They're they're mostly testing it to see how it works. And yeah, to me this seems like a lot easier of a way to progress through the battle pass a lot faster, which I love. But it kind of sucks if you're a solo player, which is kind of funny. I suppose the idea is they're trying to push people to bring their friends into COD. Well, like, there's more money if they bring their friends into COD and play together, right? I'm assuming that's the idea of it. The Blazer. I look really sharp in the blazer. I love bringing it out, but it's, it's a lot of extra work to get that all set up. Depends on how motivated I'm feeling when I go to do my video review of it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of waiting for something exciting to drop for me to do something on, like, cover and that. It's, it's just been, like, it's been dry. 
Or I'm just too used to working really hard. And then it's quieter and I'm just like, oh, what am I doing? Yeah. Jedi Fallen Order? That one should be on Game Pass, like, either at the end of the month or, like, next month. That one should be on the Game Pass, like, early next month. <sighs> Fallen Order? That's the second one, right? Yeah. No, no, is it Jedi Survivor or Fallen Order is the second one? Jedi... The first one's on Game Pass, if you have that. Anyways, it's been a while. Be sure to like the stream. Subscribing's great. Donations cool. Consider becoming a channel member. Channel member gifting the Patreon option, the Discord for stream alerts, chatter, okay times, and the Amazon store affiliate link. Grab anything on Amazon, use link in the video description. Oh, the position's gone, damn it. I was too slow. Shit! The hell did these guys go? There's two of them right here. Where did they run off? Where did they go? Elden Ring or Demon Souls? I don't know. Elden Ring? I like the more open approach of Elden Ring, the open world approach, as opposed to the more like linear setup of the Demon Souls. But when Demon Souls drops on PC, we'll, we'll do a stream of that one. It'll be funny. I won't get any progression on it, but it'll, it'll be entertaining. For the audience, not for me. But yeah. Yeah, you can't remember the name. Yeah, it's. I think it's... All in order, and then the second one, the Jedi Survivor? Nah, something like that. Naming schemes. Tricky, am I right? What's this, the third one gonna be? Like, Jedi Red Redemption, or like... <laughs> Redeemed, or Jedi Rising, or something? I don't know. wonder if they'll kill him off in the third one. Probably not, because you know, people like him too much, but it would be interesting. Down. Does what go bad? Does beer go bad? Um... I mean, any label do you have is like a best, the best before label, and it depends on where you live too, like the rules, but most of them are like suggested dates, so there's usually a bit of wiggle room. But beer going bad? I mean, I assume it does, but it, I don't know, it's a good question. Hmm. I usually don't have beer sitting around for years going bad. Mine lasts for basically ever. Pumpkin Jack? Oh, that game's a lot of fun. I really like that one. How was my day? Good. But it could have been better. <laughs> it was a huge financial loss day for me, let's put it that way. <laughs> well, I guess technically I haven't paid yet, but yeah, it's a huge financial loss day for me. Huge! Yeah, taxes on my right. <sighs> Emergency. I don't know if I like emergency. Hmm. The music beats are where it's at. Oh, I hit level 300. I mean, it doesn't mean anything, but I hit it. So that's exciting. These matches, it takes too long to like get into matches in this game. Way too long. Yeah, I feel like there's too much dead time between games. This is the worst part about COD. This is like one of the most popular games in the world, and yet its stupid matchmaking system forces you to sit there and wait for minutes between matches. Ridiculous. It's kind of hoping for the other map to mix things up a bit, but we'll pull out the long stuff. 
you got your taxes in today and got food. Good for you, man. Good for you. Alright, it's time to go. My phone's been dead all day. Go for A. Damn it. I didn't pull up fast enough. Yeah, you tell him, Ash. Come on, there's like three of us over there, guys. Somebody should have killed that person. What percentage of... <laughs> what percentage of my earnings do I pay in taxes? Uh, whatever the government-mandated thing is. What, what do you mean, what percentage of... <laughs> it's... it's I, I'm in Canada. You, you pay a very large percentage of your earnings in taxes. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. Big chunk of it. <laughs> Let's just put it this way. Every time you think you get ahead, you, you get knocked down. And I feel like taxes have gotten like more aggressive recently. I think that's because we're subsidizing a lot more like people living here now. But, uh, you know, whatever. Not like you get a choice, right? Not like you get a choice. Damn it. And it's like, you know, I, I am in the, the favor of it. It pays for your social programs and stuff, and it's great. But, like, I feel like what the government has offered in recent years has declined in quality. And I feel like the service isn't as good, and they take more. It's like a business that keeps doing worse every single year and asking for more money. And you just go, eh. But it's like a business you can't escape from. I was so close there. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think this looks way clearer after this last update. I mean, this map obviously resolution scales harder than other levels because it's larger, but I, I, I really think they've uh, improved the quality quite a bit, honestly. Fidelity wise. I wonder if that's optimization to kind of prepare us for uh, Gulf War down the road. When's the next Gollum stream? When you uh, hurl out some cash for it, that's when. Nah, man, we, we ain't touching Gollum again. Unless it's some big payout stream to go and do basically torture myself for a few hours. Or some kind of charity thing someday, but yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not going through through Gollum again. Maybe someday I will have Kevin stop by and I will put him through that because he's Lord of the Rings fan and I'd love to see him endure the pain that is Gollum, but other than that, no. I know how much you want a Gollum stream, I just I can't be the one that gives it to you. Was that? Oh, he's sitting over by the steps. I see. I was like, where was that guy? Mm, there's something out there. There's something out there. Oh, I signed up for the screening of uh, Civil War there, so I'm, I'm very excited to watch that movie. I don't know how early I'm screening it. If it's really early. I might put together like a review video on it, but we'll we'll wait and see. Yeah, we'll wait and see what happens there. Kabow! Hmm. 
Now. Anyone wanna help me get B? Nah, I got it. I think on this one you're supposed to hold what A and B or is it B and C? I'm trying to remember what it was. I don't play domination enough to remember what it specifically that it is, but like every level there's a combo of two that you're supposed to hold in order to win or more easily win, I guess. I think it's A and B because they're closer together. Damn it. Oh, hey, Suba. Godzilla vs. Kong. I haven't watched it. I almost went and watched it on last Tuesday, but I was busy doing something else. I don't know why, but there was something more important I had to do. Otherwise, I was going to go on the cheap Tuesday to do it. There's something out there. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't know what, but uh, I might go watch it. I kind of wanted to. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not huge on those, those monster movies because they're not very good. Like, they're objectively terrible movies. Uh, Kong Skull Island was was a genuinely good movie, but like the other ones are like, and I know a lot of people like monster films because they're just monster films, and that's totally cool, and they're fun for that. But like, they're pretty terrible films usually. Uh, even though people like them for their monster qualities, which is cool, but, uh, yeah, so I, I was actually going to go and watch it, but I can't remember what it was on this, like, last Tuesday. It, there was something more important I had to do. I can't remember what specifically, but, yeah. So maybe this Tuesday I might, I don't know. But we'll, we'll see if it fits in and if I kind of feel a desire to or if I have something else going on. Drop shot, me gorilla, come on. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm more into the Civil War movie because the uh, concept of like the thematics and the fact that it's got really good review scores. I, I'm less intrigued in the idea of it being like, oh, the US is in the Civil War and more about why the thematics of it, and yeah, that's, that intrigues me more. Damn it, these snipers just keep picking me off, man. But this is the map to snipe on, I guess. So this map makes more sense than getting sniped on, like, Shoot House or Rust or something. I'll just keep getting picked off. We don't have a single position. We had a good lead and we've lost everything. Securing objective Bravo. Come on, we almost had B. Why didn't somebody go to B with me? We're blowing the lead. We're blowing it. I literally drop shot it into my bullets. Yeah, we literally, we had a great lead and we completely blew it there. Damn it, dude. I mean, it was pretty obvious that we're going to be seeing Gear 6. I mean, it was kind of a matter of time, right? Gotcha, didn't I? Okay, switching mags. Hmm. My ass shot up over here. The Go! These guys trying to snipe at me. Don't stand in the open, you'll get sniped, e spooky babe. Enemy securing Charlie. They're everywhere. Changing mags. Grenade! Grenade! Ah, damn it. I'm just trying to, you know, keep us afloat here. The score, it's incredibly close. I'm just trying to give us the edge. Well, 
Oh, I blasted that guy through the window. Crazy. Rebirth? Nah, I'm not into Warzone. Dark Scary Vibe? Gears 5 has some pretty dark <laughs> areas and stuff to it, like some pretty creepy setups. I don't know, if, if anything, Gears 4, 5, and 6 should technically be lighter games, because thematically they're rebuilding, so there should be like a brighter level of like hope to them. Not, not every Gears game needs to be grim, dark sorrows and depression. Like that was the truly the whole point of the trilogy was grim, dark sorrows and depression for them to build a better future for the younger ones. Like thematically, that was the whole idea <laughs> was because they were suffering so that their children could have a better future and stuff, which would be brighter in that. So, I mean, like I don't mind Gears being kind of horror-like and having scary stuff to it, but like. They don't all need to be like that. Or they shouldn't all be like that. Ah. Can't we believe we blew that lead? I don't even know how we blew that lead. We were up by like 25 too. Biggest map, this guy's running around with a knife stabbing people. My god. Why? I hate knifers. I don't know why they do that. Hey, Sherry, did you try any uh, snipers? Like sniper weapons on this map? It actually has a pretty good sniping points. Actually, no, I have, I'm not actually sure how familiar she is with the, uh, the level layouts, because that matters a lot too for knowing where to go. I will take the COD points, thank you very much. Cardinal. He has the cape. Cool. She's got a, a battle cape. Stylistic and functional. It does it all. Well, I actually was playing as Ash, so we're gonna put up uh, our good old friend Andrew Lincoln. The dead, the he misses his revolver, he will tell you 9,000 times. You got the scary vibe. Well, yeah, those games are, are horror games, but the whole point of the first series is scary, it's the end of the world, everything's dark, everything's grim. And at the end of the third game, there's hope and things are new, so it should be brighter fourth, five, and six entries because it's a rebuild. <laughs> yeah. Like, you can have scary portions and dark and terrifying stuff, but, like, again, thematically, the motivations and the world should change with the changing of things. It's just like, uh, an example is like, oh, you, you want the same thing over and over again until you look at something like Star Wars where they're just shoving nostalgia down your throat and nobody likes that. You need a good sniper. See, now the sad thing is, is I don't snipe, so I can't recommend any snipers for you. Because <laughs> that's not my thing, but there's some guys that have like one-shot snipers that just kill people. How's that phone doing? 77% charged. Okay, here we go. Head cold is... I'm gonna pop on the the took force. Let's get to it. Running gun with the walking dead. Do do do. Ed Quarters. Oh, what the hell? Where was that guy? I literally looked over there. There wasn't... I thought I was going to be off like a really good start and then just get shot down by like that guy. That's what I'm assuming is like the sniper rifle or something. Anyways, it's been a while. If you could take a moment to like the stream, that would be great. Subscribe, it's great. Donations, cool. Consider becoming a channel member. Channel member gifting, aw oh, damn it, the Patreon option and the Discord for stream alerts, chatter, and okay times. There's also an Amazon store for you, like, if you grab anything on Amazon, use the link in the video description. Oh, he got me with a knife. 
Yeah, but I wish I had some sniper recommendations for you. This map's a running gun level. Yeah, so I, I don't really do the sniping, so that's why I use the longer AK to be able to, or the Kaznov or whatever, to be able to shoot with the, the rifle on the state. It's a bigger, larger map. How the hell did that guy see me? He's in the smoke. What? Oh, the stupid... <laughs> the the laser sight gave me away. Oh, that sucks. Guess I deserve that. That's funny. Yeah, the laser sight through the smoke would give away your position, eh? I just stunned myself. No! Damn it. That was pretty good there for a second. And I was falling apart. And it was breaking my heart. <gasps> just kidding. Hmm, okay, I'm bloodthirsty. Let's, let's get going here again. Really? Really? Do they ever release the Godzilla skin? I've kind of been waiting for the Godzilla skin to come out, but I keep not seeing it. I don't think it's in the story yet or something. I don't know. It's kind of driving me nuts. Hmm. Our UAV is online. Well, this isn't going well. There we go. Actually, it is going well. We've got a great score. Pretty good amount of kills. I have a tracker? Oh, yeah, that stupid tracker thing. That was a terrible grenade. Wow, that grenade kept rolling and rolling towards me. What the hell? Why does Rick randomly yell at the show? If she's not even in the match. It just seems silly. You miss your revolver. We just killed like a bunch of people. Using the Toke for Snoop Dogg gun and you miss your revolver? The voice lines make them make sense. Target area marked. You know, the commentary in golf, it was making fun of me the whole night, but it, it made sense. Really well sense, yeah. Triple kill. Killtacular. Ah, damn it. Could have had more. Yeah, it looks like a bit of a quiet start to the night. Very fair enough. Fair enough. Ugh. Hmm. Target down. Anyways, yeah. I really gotta find more space and time to get some some dating game stuff going on, or else I'm just gonna end up not interacting with anyone ever, which is not good. I really want to get a house first, but like, yeah, I feel like that's just so ridiculous to work towards. It sucks. If only housing was cheap like it was back in the day in the Canada land. Envious of those with their overly affordable housing options. I did learn though that taxes wise, when I do buy a house, you get ten thousand dollar tax credit when you buy your first house. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like a free year off taxes basically. <clears throat> I guess depending on how much you make, but yeah. Beat 
Ah, please reload and then yeah, okay. Damn it, I missed my revolver. The flash terror? That sounds like a ridiculous weapon. Is that like a Warhammer knife? Oh come, I thought my teammate was gonna have that first. Damn it. Sucks to suck. I'll have to get it next time, I guess. Hmm. Damn it. I do love playing this game at the high frame rate, though. It, it makes a world of difference, honestly. I can't wait to finally get to the Halo stream out the door at high frame rate. It's gonna be marvelous. At least I hope it's gonna be marvelous. It'd be embarrassing if it wasn't. Hmm. They're messing with the wrong people. Tactical out. You tell them, Rick, about your lines from the show from ten years ago. Ah. Who's in here? I don't even see anybody. Ugh. Surgically hip 69? Okay, that's pretty funny. So there was this band in Canada called the Tragically Hip. Great band, by the way. I think that's a play off of that and being called the surgically hip, which is kind of funny. A very humorous little joke. At least I think so. Yeah, we, we, we've got no chatter here, so I'm just gonna have to start spitballing conversational things. Yeah. You guys ever wonder about the magic of bug snacks? I know I do. Too often. It's become a problem. I mean, we're actually having a great match. We have a huge lead on the headquarters. We're getting lots of points. We're getting lots of kills. Pretty happy. Capturing this nice. Yeah, it, it can be hard to come up with idle chatter some days. It can be difficult. Oh, I didn't even get to use my SAE, I forgot because I'm, I'm dead and we have a headquarters captured and I can't respond. Where's the next head cultus? But yeah, I, I never liked when they made headquarters kind of like go on and on time-wise. Because like you get all this like overtime headquarters stuff and it's just it's so long. Like these matches can just stretch on. Which I guess keeps things competitive, but like sometimes it makes the matches feel a little too expansive. That's a teammate. Hmm. And we're able to capture in like two seconds. Be sad if we didn't get this considering we've held it down for this whole time. There we go, we got it. That's what happens when the other team's too focused on sniping and not killing or taking positions. Loading fresh mag. How did I not kill that guy? You gotta be kidding me. Ah, oh, this sucks to suck scenario. I, I guess from a side perspective, we did do a great video on about Steam on Xbox today. That did really well. I was happy about that. And uh, Grandi HD, which are two of the most, well, some of the most classic role-playing games ever. And uh, they did it. HD compilation pack that released the other week, so I finally did a video on that. That's up on the channel. They're actually really great role-playing games. Really ahead of their times. 
Very interesting, I thought. Which is why I wanted to highlight them. And, uh, yeah, that's up on the channel today. And then on the weekend, some odd games and PlayStation 5 stuff, because there's nothing crazy to do or exciting out. And, uh, you yeah, kind of get what you get this weekend, I guess, because there's nothing crazy going on. Yeah. See, I wish I had more high pain events and stuff going on, but, uh, you know, it's only so much that happens specifically in a week. Sadly. Hmm. Oh, you have to clear the headquarters too? Oh man, that's a ridiculous amount of work. On the bright side, I've got like 70 kills, so that's, that's pretty great. That's a bad- I thought that was a teammate, damn it. Yeah, I know. Pretty riveting high-end, uh, octane, or high-octane, or juicy action. Is that my grenade? Nah, it doesn't matter, we got the win anyways. There's no way they're coming back when they're down 100 points in headquarters. The game's a complete wash, uh, in our favor. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm doing pretty good. 72 kills. Yeah, I mean, can't really complain, right? Hmm. I wish I would have been able to stream with the higher frame rate on COD for a long time. It would have made a... A world of difference in terms of performance over the years, I gotta say. Yeah, you tell him, Rick. God damn it, I missed my revolt. I don't see like I don't understand why that voice line gets triggered when you get like a triple kill or something. Like it doesn't make sense. Like you're doing well without your revolver. Why do you need it? Is it because it's harder to get a triple kill without your revolver? I, I just I don't understand that concept. That's just odd, yeah. It's very, very odd. Hmm. Well, we should have the win here, I'm imagining. 80 kills, very proud of that. Did great. That's the Sherry advantage. Obviously, always a great round of applause for Sherry out there helping out on these streams. I'm kind of debating on if I should get another rum and coke for the night or not. They're messing with the tossing tactical. Hmm. I feel like this is where I should go on some kind of long tangent because I have nothing to feed off of. Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. I'll, I'll try to come up with something for you guys, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's any big highlights from this week either. I mean, I should be just focused on killing, but that's that's not exciting enough either. Um, hmm. Let's see. What do I got? Let's see. Do you ever look at private accounts on social media profiles and sit there and ponder what they're posting? <laughs> Wondering what's going on? Wondering what's happening in their twisted, secure, closed-off world? Cause yeah, I don't really do that. But I imagine a lot of people do. Who are these people hiding from? What are they doing? Did you see they have, you can have a, a secret Instagram account attached to your main account now? That only some people can see? I'm sure that's not a testing grounds for a OnlyFans type featurette, I guess, I suppose. Hmm, yes. 
I feel like I actually have to restart the chat. Is nobody giving me fucking anything to work off of here, or is it the chat that's broken? Nope, I, I got absolutely nothing. You guys are killing me tonight. <laughs> uh, mm, yeah, nope, just, just nothing. Alright, let me think here. Well, I've, I've had a great match, I mean, so that's that's good. I should pat myself on the shoulders, I, I suppose, for doing that. Both shoulders, not just one, but both. It'd be cool if I could crack 100 kills, but uh, with 20 seconds left, I don't think that's going to be possible, honestly. But this is this is one of the better performances I've ever had, so that's, that's great. You know? I think I will have to go refill my drink after this and uh, come up with more stimulating conversational pieces for you, I, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. It's only partially causing me to go squirrely. Only partially. Changing mag. See, now, I don't get this thing. That's like, the game is basically over. It's 187 to 86. And they stop the clock when we wait for this position to be available. It's, it's, it's a silly concept. I, I don't understand the point of it. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Oh, well, that was a hell of a good match. I'm gonna take this time to go to the bathroom and pour another drink and then hopefully come up with some more stimulating conversation for you guys. Um, here, enjoy me making some craft dinner while I, I think about this. Can I stream Warzone Mobile? I kind of thought about doing that, but then like... There weren't many views on my review video for Warzone Mobile. And uh, I don't, like my battery really couldn't handle it on my phone. And I wasn't sure if it was worth emulating on Bluestacks, but thank you for a question. That's really, really necessary, honestly. Okay. So I refilled my drink because obviously I'm going to have to get creative tonight in order to entertain you guys. And I, I do appreciate y'all stopping by even though not giving me much to work on tonight. I, I do appreciate y'all taking your time. It's not as cold as I'm used to. I should have grabbed another ice cube. Cod was going to change to every other year. Uh, I, I don't think that was... That was ever a thing. That was more uh, wishful thinking from people, if that makes sense. That was more 
Yeah, that, that was more of a wishful thinking thing that COD was going to go to a two-year cycle, or was uh, suggested that the Xbox may do that. But, uh, I mean, you don't pay that much money for a company and stop using the main money maker. Like, you know, you don't try to damage that cycle of money that could be made. So if, if they were to switch it to, you know, like a bi or bi yearly, I guess that'd be like every other year. It would probably, it could damage the series to some degree, and it's a cash cow that's proven every single year, so there's no reason to change it, and also Call of Duty, it takes so much work to get these games out every year, that they're actually planned up till 2028, so yeah, the cycle of COD is, is set till 2028 Call of Duty, after that we don't know, but yeah, 2020, up till 2028 Call of Duty is, is set for what it is. So you get two years of Black Ops, 2024, 2025, and then 2026 is the next Infinity Ward at uh, Call of Duty, and then you get another Sledgehammer one. So the Infinity Ward is going to be another Modern Warfare, and then Sledgehammer, we're assuming, is going to be another Modern Warfare. And then it should be one more Treyarch game or something, uh, which will be Black Ops again, and uh, after that we don't really know. Yeah, you're right, it is that time to, you know, like the stream, subscribe and spray, donations, cool. Consider becoming a channel member, channel member gifted, the Patreon option, the Discord for stream alerts, chat at great times, and the, the Amazon sort of affiliate link. If you're grabbing anything on Amazon, use the, the link there in the video description. And, uh, as always, appreciate you guys coming out and watching all the time, it's, it's nice. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to come up with riveting conversational pieces. I, I think the best thing to do is I'm gonna dive deep into my library of movies and we'll, we'll talk about the, the films I have in my, my movie library. Because that's, that's the conversational point I'm, I guess I'm going with at this point. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I could sit here and I could uh, whine about my, my heartbreak, but that's, that's been too many years in the works. It's been too traumatic. And, uh, I already talked about what happened today. Yep. And there's nothing new coming out. There's nothing new and crazy going on. I don't have any events I'm looking forward to. I could talk about the collapsing of the Canadian market and housing costs, but we've already done that a million times. Yeah. Did I feel that earthquake? Uh, no, I, I wasn't even aware that there was an earthquake until I saw people in the Discord talking about it. I'm, I'm like, way, I'm so far away from that. Absolutely nowhere near that. If you're into that kind of thing, you're, you're right, if you, if you are into that kind of thing. <laughs> the channel membership stuff. Yeah, if, you, if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's so costly. It's like what, two bucks, under two bucks a month or something to be a member. I mean, it's it's just like I'm I'm ringing you guys. That's what I'm doing. An eclipse? Uh, I I don't know about the eclipse. I'm not too sure. Like, I haven't really put much thought in it to be honest. Yeah, I don't I don't know. It might be here. I'd I'd have to look look into it. I don't know if it's something I'm gonna be really big into. I was more focused on, uh, what was it? Yeah, doing the hockey game. Oh, I, I also got my mama there. Because it was her birthday today. I got her uh, flowers. A uh, nice little bouquet of flowers and stuff. And, uh, so my sister got her. We, we, we went shopping together to go, and she, my sister got her, like, some soap, and I bought her flowers and stuff. Yeah. It's just kind of a nice little thing. Yeah, a pretty rough year with the, uh, or, well, the last year was with Grandma Mom passing away and stuff, and then she still has to deal with the, the grandfather there and that, and he's uh, an armful in his uh, aging years, let's put it that way. So I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll go do this nice stuff. An earthquake? Yeah, is the eclipse the one you don't want to look at because it like blinds you? There, there's so many weird things that like are super cool, but like if you look at, it, they like ruin your eyesight. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like like a nuclear blast, you, you'd never want to be near or you want happen, but like 
It would be pretty cool to look at, right? Like, it'd be pretty cool to see, but, like, it would blow out your retinas and stuff. And same with the Eclipse stuff. Oh, hey, Caleb. Thoughtful of me. I, I mean, it's just, you know, something you do for your parents. We, we don't really do, like, birthday stuff usually to family. It's, it's more like, you know, if, if my sister or I have a birthday, we go and we eat somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, we just go and do, like, a dinner thing usually, so. But I, I thought she could use an extra little gift thing. And, yeah, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. But we don't typically do that kind of stuff uh, in the later years. Because, we, we, like, I don't know how to describe it, but, like, you know, oh, it's thoughtful to do gifts, blah, 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 but we're all, like, pretty decently, like, well off, if that makes sense. Like, so it's kind of like everyone buys whatever they need, so it's, it's like, really hard to do gift shopping. <laughs> so we usually just do, like, dinners, honestly. Yeah. We also used to do cakes for every birthday, but everyone has become more calorie conscientious. <laughs> so we don't really buy cakes anymore, uh, which is kind of funny. But uh, yeah, so this is a bit interesting. It's a bit different, but you know, family dynamics. Is this 120 FPS mode? It is, yes. I, I now stream at 120 FPS when possible. And I'm using the uh, Castoff 762 Groovy Edition, which comes with Ash from Evil Dead. Oh, hey, sorry, Caster. Oh, so now everyone's here. After I, I took all this time to come up with a conversational point because nobody was asking questions or anything for like half an hour now. Now people are here? Yeah. It's like a car accident. <laughs> yeah. You would have gotten her some Starbucks? I think I could buy her Starbucks any day. I usually buy my, my mama, like, beers, honestly. Yes, I, I, I take her for drinks occasionally. <laughs> and I pay so that she doesn't have it pop up on her, <laughs> on her card. <laughs> Which is funny. But yeah, no, we, we, we go to beers and stuff. Starbucks. Starbucks I get with my sister. Yeah, the, the mama and I, we, we drink. <laughs> Which is funny. Yeah, it's kind of hilarious. What's new in Season 3? Boatloads of uh, clinical depression. I, I don't know. I've been, actually, you know what? The biggest new thing is... I think there's six new maps or something like that. And the new party XP system. So the more people you have in your party, the more XP you get. Like battle pass XP and stuff. Yeah. But uh, they've actually, like, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the 120 FPS mode, the resolution's been bumped up. It looks way cleaner. Way cleaner. Well, that was a bad match for me. Anyways, like I like promised, we're, I'm gonna go through my movie library. So you guys, you guys better get ready for this. I'm popping it up. We're going through the movies. Yeah. Ooh, I got a battle pass token. And again, always thanks to Sherry for joining for the Sherry advantage, because the player matches end up being easier, so... It's always appreciated. Barry doesn't know how much of an advantage she actually is in these matches. It, it makes a big deal. Uh, uh, Charlie Brown Thanksgiving 1973. Obviously, I don't even think I need to go over this. It's a classic animated film. It's a really good thing stuff. You need special glasses for the eclipse. Okay, so I'm probably just not going to see that, or maybe I'll watch the stream that NASA's doing. So I don't need... I don't think I need to go over Charlie Brown's uh, Thanksgiving. It's an like an obvious classic. Uh, a Knight's Tale, which is a, a great, great film from, uh, it's, it's got Heath, like, uh, Heath Ledger's the main character, it's a great romance movie, it's fun, it's easy going, he's a knight, but he's not a knight, and they joust, it has modern music, it's really, really good, yeah. Uh, then there's The Night at the Roxbury, or A Night at the Roxbury, which is obviously a classic where it's like, what is love? 
da, 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 da. and it's you know it's Will Ferrell and that other guy, and it was based on an SNL skit, and they made the full movie, and it's a bit of a classic. It's about two guys trying to make a club happen, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we got Ace in the Hole, which I think is uh, fantastic, more interesting now than when it came out kind of movie. It's, it's an incredible film, I highly recommend it. It was a lost film until several years ago where they found it in some attic or something. Man, this game takes forever to start, dude. It's an incredible movie about sensational press and media. It's, it's one of the best movies I think ever created. And it's, it's, it's very, very good. Very, very good. Uh, Airplane and Airplane 2. Obviously, Airplane is the funniest movie of all time. Scientifically proven, it delivers the most jokes per minute of any movie ever created. It's incredible. So that's Airplane. Oh, people are not liking the movie options. Okay, well, whatever. We're, we're going through this. Uh, An American in Paris, which is an excellent musical. Uh, it's got Gene Kelly, and he's a struggling artist in, in France. And a romance film she's supposed to be with somebody else but the two of them love each other and they dance and it's gorgeous it's, it's an incredible film absolutely incredible uh, i have anchors away which is apparently has sinatra in it but i've never actually watched it so no nah, that was that one uh, then there's anna and the apocalypse which is uh, a christmas movie i watch every year it's a zombie christmas movie where Anna is in the middle of an apocalypse, and it's a musical, and it sets her in Christmas. It's uh, it's fun, little sexy, little enjoyable, great movie. I watched it in the theaters. It was uh, it was awesome, and it's a yearly Christmas tradition film for me now because uh, it's it's so good. It's called Yeah Anna and the Apocalypse. Very well recommended. Uh, great lead character. Very very good. Ace in the Hole 1951 with Kirk Douglas. That's the very film. Yeah, that's the one, my friend. Great movie. And like I said, thematically, I think the themes... Obviously, thematics meaning themes. I think the themes are more relevant now than even at the time, honestly, about sensationalism within media and press and stuff. It's, it's a great, great movie. Absolutely love that film. Uh, the only shame is it's not a movie to just, like, pop up and watch. So I'm hoping... Because I, I wanted to, again, someday buy a house. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to do movie nights monthly so I have an excuse to show that to some people and be like, Hey, this is the... Probably be the first movie of my monthly movie nights. Well, maybe Airplane would be a little easier to ease people into the movies. But yeah, Ace in the Hole is a, an incredible film if you can watch it. Very, very good. Not a movie person. Well... Zarcaster, why why are you not a movie person? Movies are are wonderful. It's escapism at its finest. You can literally for like an hour or two, you can totally be lost in a world that is not the world you're in, and it, you can feel all these emotions. And if you're in a theater, it's a communal, you know, system and expression of the arts, a modernized version of going to watch like a play or something. And, it, it, movies are very, very special. You should, uh, you should embrace film, Zarcaster. You, sh you should embrace film. Is it because you're in, you know, Brazil? You, is it because the la is it a language barrier kind of thing or a cultural barrier thing? It's like movies are incredibly moving things. Yeah, they're, they're there's very few experiences like them, honestly. Games obviously go further. A Face in the Crowd. I have actually never even heard of that movie. It's the one to throw on the thing. You're a television the television person? Yeah, because they got one, two, three movies. Uh, another film in my... I'm just going through my my like library of movies. We've got uh, Anna Karina, which I have honestly never watched. See, some of these movies I have sitting here, but I just like have never gotten like a night to watch them. Because I like, you know, collect them and then they just kind of sit there. So I don't even know what Anna Karina is about, but it's a, it's a 1935 film. Yeah. So someday I'll hopefully watch that. Hmm. 
We've got Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp. I don't think I need to talk about the Ant-Man films, but I like the Ant-Man movies. They're fun. Uh, then there's the Avengers movies, so, you know, pretty standard. I don't need to talk about the Avengers films. They're all pretty done. Uh, Baby Driver, great movie, lots of fun. High octane, good music, good action. Smooth play, you know, great action the whole way through, with choreographed audio and stuff. It's, it's a lot of fun, that film. It just, like, it's so slick and well done. Uh, Batman Hush, Batman Gotham by Gasly, Batman vs. the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Batman vs. Two-Face, so lots of the animated Batman stuff. I think those are just part of my library because I think I screened a number of those through, like, DC or something at the time. Yeah. You're just about finished with Ugly Betty? Okay, that's interesting. Hmm. That... Why? <laughs> what are you... Why are you watching that? Uh, <laughs> Caleb, why, why are you watching Glee Betty? Not, not hating at all, but I'm just genuinely curious as to, like, why specifically. That's fascinating. Very fascinating. Hmm. We've got uh, Beer Fest, which is strangely a, a decent movie. I think it's from, I, I believe they're called Lizard Troop or something like that. They're a group of comedians and their movies are actually pretty decent. I think they're called Lizard Troop. They're the guys that make Starship Troopers. And, and Beer Fest is, it's not like a, a great film, but like they have another one which I'll get to later. It's which is genuinely a great film, but like, yeah, they they actually make pretty decent adult intense comedies with like no restraints. Yeah, I listen to Car what's what's Cardi? Are you, is, I don't know who that is. You're watching Breaking Bad. Yeah, that is a very good show. Yeah, that that is a good one. Now my thing for Breaking Bad, do people? Rewatch it a lot because I like I know a few people that just like keep rewatching that show and I was more like I watched it when it was on and I kind of was done with it I don't want to really watch it or I, I feel like I don't need to watch it again if that makes sense I don't know if I'll revisit it in like 10 or 20 years, but like I Feel still from when it first ended Satisfied and don't need to revisit it if if that makes sense 28 days later. That's that's not a that's not a movie in my library, but I, I am familiar with the uh, the series. They're making a new one. I, I don't know if it's gonna be 28 years later or something, but they are they are making a new one. This is what 28 days, 28 weeks, and then yeah, apparently they're doing like 28 years or something like that. The girl next door. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, being John Malkovich, which is a very odd film. It's a, it's a very strange film. It's worth one watch, but it's a very, very odd, abstract film about being John Malkovich, but it's like a doorway into, like, controlling and being and seeing things through John Malkovich. It's just a weird movie. It's, I don't even know if I would recommend it, honestly, but it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. I don't know why, I, okay, so I watched it when I was younger, and then the concept of it sort of popped up again when I was older. And then, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I went from that one. So being John Malkovich, that's, that's fascinating. Cardi the Rapper. No, I, I don't... I don't really listen to rap. Uh, I listen to Eminem. Uh, maybe a little bit of some of the older rappers, like you know, like like Fifty Cent and, and stuff. But uh, no, I I mean I've heard of Cardi. Uh, when I used Reddit, uh, there was a, a subreddit called Cardi B or something, and there was all these really dumb posts that would pop up. So I know of Cardi B because I blocked that subreddit because it was really annoying. But uh, yeah, I, I don't really know of, of Cardi. Yes, yeah, it's, it's Cardi as in a T. Yes. Yeah. Not not Cardi. It's it's Carti. Cardi. Yeah. 
I, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's, it's car tie, not car die. <laughs> and I, I am saying it correctly in my my way of saying things. Yeah. Mia Khalifa. I've heard of of the Mia Khalifa, but I don't I don't listen to the Mia the Khalifa. Sorry. My my music has also kind of stopped. I I stopped adding new music. Back in like 2019, I, I kind of gave up, and uh, yeah, I don't really add too many new songs to my music library. Playboy Cardi guys, not Cardi B. There's a difference. You guys are talking about fashion. Why are we talking about fashion? You like modeling work and art the clothes. Is Ugly Betty about modeling and art? I thought that was a show about a young girl dealing with life while having braces and stuff, or if I think he was something completely different. Do you like modeling? Do you watch Project Runway, Caleb? And what else is about modeling? Yeah, the, the Devil Wears Prada, that's that's a modeling movie, isn't it? Kind of. Anne Hathaway, and she deals with that stuff. It's not part of my library, but it's, it's part of the conversation here. Yeah. Drake is a better. I I know of Drake. I I've I've heard of the Drake man. He goes to the. He goes to the Raptors. Hmm. I I don't even know. Okay, I'm gonna continue on here. Uh, where where were we at? Oh, we missed uh the Back to the Future movies. How the hell did I- sorry, we missed the Back to the Future trilogy, obviously the greatest trilogy ever created in film. Perfect movies. Uh, there was this one gal I really liked, and I showed her Back to the Future, and she fell asleep. So that was a little disheartening. Um, but yeah, Back to the Future, really great franchise. And Basketball. Yeah, okay. Basketball. That movie is not great, but like, on the odd night, it's kind of fun. Because it's like, basketball but it's, it's like the the downfall of sports and then they create this new beautiful sport and it's about the purity of sport and it's yeah it's called basketball not great though but it's fun uh let's let's get back to where i was uh bill and ted the movies you know pretty self-explanatory keanu and stuff they do history stuff it's fun uh birdman which is really good uh, i think it robbed uh, the grand budapest personally of the oscar but you know yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, Birdman, which is... There, there's some irony there because it's so Keaton much. coming back as an aging hero in a play, and then he like literally does that anyways in real life by doing Batman and everything again, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Hmm. E.T. How old am I? I'm, I'm old. My best days are behind me. Yeah, basketball with the, uh, the South Park creators. Uh, the Blade Runners, obviously. Uh, Blades of Glory, which is one of my favorite, uh, I don't know if they call it guilty pleasure movies, but I, I really like Blades of Glory. It's not a great movie, but there is something about the utter ridiculousness of it, and the figure skating element of it, and the Olympic element of it, and I really like Blades of Glory. It's a fun, enjoyable, like, background movie kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, Blazing Saddles, which is obviously a classic uh, satirical like comedy movie. Very, very well done. I think the material and the things they make fun of are very relevant even today. But yeah, uh, Blazing Saddles was really good. Just going through my library, guys. My favorite Modern Warfare 3 bundle? Like, characters? Um... Probably like Modern Warfare 3 specifically bundle. Uh, Ash from Evil Dead, he's he's really cool. I, yeah, I really like my Ash character pack, but I don't know if he's a Modern Warfare 2 2 character. I'm not too sure. Sorry, they kind of blend together for me. Favorite Spielberg movie? Probably Jaws? Probably Jaws. Yeah, guilty pleasures. I, I don't want to be doing all guilty pleasure stuff. 
If a girl falls asleep, turning back to future is a complete deal breaker. To be fair, in, in that circumstance, she was, uh, I think, staying up pretty late to kind of match my late hour of things. It, it, it fell apart for other reasons. She... I don't know. There's something off about that one, but uh, yeah. But it's such a good movie, Back to the Future, yeah. Jaws 1 is good. Well, Jaws 1 is uh, one of the greatest examples of, of cinema we have. Back to the Future is mid? Get the fuck out of this chat. <laughs> Oh, I, f I forgot to tell you guys to like the stream and subscribe and all that. You should probably do that. I'm not playing on Invasion. Stop putting me on Invasion. Stop it. I hate that map. Okay, uh, let's see what we got here. Terrible movies. Oh, Booksmart. Nah, or, well, I'll talk about Booksmart first. Uh, Booksmart is incredible. It's a great movie. It's a great comedy. A great modern comedy, very well done, very witty, very funny. Uh, a perfect film for kind of, like, I guess, women to watch with other women, I would say mostly. But I think it's just a great sort of high school type comedy movie. It's very, very well done. Booksmart is uh, incredible. Very, very incredible. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if I can handle this guy saying... Back to the Future is mid. It's it's literally like the greatest trilogy ever created in film, and the, the Back to the Future movies are flawless classics. I just I, I can't even take that. Natalie Portman or Anne Hathaway? Mm, I, I, I think I go with Anne Hathaway. The Catwoman outfit is just yeah. I yeah I gotta go with Anne Hathaway there. I also think she's kind of the better actress of the two. Yeah. Sports movies? You talking about the comebacks? Yeah. Hmm. Wedding Crashers. Uh, Wedding Crashers is, is a fun 2000s comedy. I still think it's pretty entertaining today. And it was peak. Like, there was a special time, and you had to be alive for it, in the 2000s where like Vince Vaughn and wow <laughs> Owen Wilson were like this unstoppable comedy duo and they completely fell flat with that movie where they work for Google or something like that but yeah those two were like yeah Wedding Crashers is like a peak 2000s comedy movie I think that one holds up pretty well like it's it's weird and it's twisted, but like it's it's still a very very good comedy film. Yeah, what it crashes is. And keep in mind, guys, like I've you know like I, I take my film stuff very seriously. Like I've watched thousands of movies. I grew up watching movies like crazy. I've reviewed hundreds of movies. I love film. <laughs> so it's like I have I have a, a lot of. Uh, a lot of takes and thoughts on, on movies. I'm, I'm very, very passionate about film. Yeah. Yeah. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is a very, very good trilogy. It's masterful, it's dramatic, it's intense, but there's just something about the intricacies and the designs of Back to the Future where it's like... It's great as a comedy, it's great as a drama, it's great for action, there's a fun, hopeful tone to it. Like, I don't even think you could do Back to the Future anymore, because people are too... Like, the movie would be too dreary in tone, but there's like, there's darker parts of Back to the Future, but it's always so hopeful and exciting and fun. And then, like, the combination of, of Christopher Lloyd with, uh... Michael J. Fox is it's just it's unbeatable. Those two are in, an incredible dynamic. It, it it's a great series, and then you've got an incredible villain uh, with Biff Tan in there, and yeah, those Back to the Future movies are just cinema at its wildest, funnest, craziest sort of design. It's it's great. Those movies are perfect. Yeah, absolutely great movies. Hmm. Act of Valor, I, I don't remember. Like, I haven't seen that one in a long time, so I don't remember it well enough to give you thoughts on that one. Uh, let's continue. Uh, Bottle Rocket, which was uh, a very early... 
a combination of the, the Wilson brothers and Wes Anderson. So it was kind of Wes Anderson first discovering his uh, directorial like uh, design. So it doesn't look quite like later Wes Anderson movies, but it's got like the beginning quirks of Wes Anderson kind of getting into like the flow of who he is as a director. And it's a fun little movie. It's it's a bit of a heist film. It's it's very very good. Uh, Bottle Rocket is is a very enjoyable. It's, it's not my favorite Wes Anderson, but it's a very very enjoyable Wes Anderson film. And uh, Wes Anderson's my my favorite director. That guy just I will watch anything he puts out, which is kind of funny too because I I thought his his weakest film actually was his most recent where he did the. Uh, Asteroid City, I, and I, I liked Asteroid City, but I also like felt it was his weakest because it was like, mm, I mean, I reviewed it and everything already, but yeah, I, I, I love Wes Anderson films. Do I think Back to the Future tops the Star Wars trilogy? Oh, absolutely, yeah, sorry. Best trilogy ever in film, I, yeah. And I would say that like the Lord of the Rings is like really close, but just tonally the way Back to the Future fits together, it's like, it's it's unbeatable in my opinion. Unbeatable. Yeah. Yeah, the, we were doing that earlier, Thomas, the Horde point, but it's uh, it's only got four, like it's got just on the, the spooky zombie map, so there's only four levels in Horde point, and I can't just play the same four levels over and over again, otherwise I would because I, I love Horde point so much, but yeah, it's like I can't do. Those four levels on on repeat like that, it uh, it, it drives me crazy. It absolutely drives me crazy. The Fable Man's really? Oh, that's an interesting choice. Uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's, which is a bit of a, a classic film. Uh, just the style, the, the direction on that one, and the the bit of its it's like a time capsule kind of movie too. It's yeah, that one's. Uh, Interesting films. The Breakfast at Tiffany's. I got I got quite the library. I don't have everything, but I've I've got quite the library here, honestly. A Bumblebee, which I love because of the the opening part where it shows the 80s Transformers. Uh, Bumblebee is so so good. I love that film. And Haley uh, Steinfeld there is she's stunning and she's so fun and so like I don't want to say quirky. Because it kind of makes a generic sound, I think, for women in film in the modern eras that are younger. But like, yeah, Bumblebees. There's a lot of heart in that movie. It's really, really good. Yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Bye Bye Birdie, which I haven't watched. Caddy Shack, which is obviously a very classic film, but it went up against Airplane. So the director, because I think that I don't know how accurate that movie is, but there's like a Netflix movie that talks about like the guy basically like offed himself because well we don't know for sure but it was like you know we went off a cliff and yeah the whole thing with Chevy Chase and everything like that um, but yeah the guy who put together Caddyshack and stuff was like I guess just broken because Airplane was such a better film but like Caddyshack is still like a classic too so it's, it's kind of interesting but yeah Caddyshack's pretty fun and it's a good little coming of age story for an individual that has to work as like a caddy but then you've got like Chevy Chase at like his prime and his best cockiness and he's this incredible golfer and yeah Caddyshack's really really fun movie and Bill Murray is a complete creep in it and uh, it's actually worth watching or reading about like the behind the scenes things on how that movie came together it's really really quite fascinating but yeah Caddyshack's really good and uh hmm a favorite Adam Sandler movie? Um, probably Punch Drunk Love. Like he he can actually act that dude. He chooses not to in a lot of movies, but I would I would say Punch Drunk Love is is a very very good film. Yeah, does that count as an Adam Sandler movie? Like, are you talking about like where he like runs the whole show and everything like that? If that makes sense. Like, there's Adam Sandler movies, and then there's movies where Adam Sandler is like in them. And it's like, yeah, Punch Drunk Love is, is very, very well done. Yeah, very, very good. 
Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, he's so fun in that movie. Like, you can tell that that guy is in, like, his own world when he's in Caddyshack. Because it's like, Caddyshack is so weird because there's so many things going on. Like, you've got Chevy Chase at his, like, prime best cocky golfing fun comedy. You got this young kid that's, like, trying to figure out what he's doing with his life, and he's got a woman that he's, like, you know, interacting with, and... And then you've got Bill Murray being a creep, and then you've got, yeah, Dangerfield. That guy's just, like... He, he kind of... He reminds me really very much of, like, Robin Williams, where the guy is just, like, in completely his own league of, like, comedy and action, and basically other people are, like, a set. Like, they're the set, and he's just, like, this comedic mastermind just flowing through it being crazy, that guy is a uh, real talent. Yeah, that guy's really, really good. Hmm. The Breakfast Club should be remade? I, I don't think there's really a point in doing that. I mean, I guess you could modernize it, but it would be a failure, I would imagine. Uh, Hollywood has a really bad problem with, like, remaking everything. Like, it's fine to remake some stuff, because that's what Hollywood has always done. But they should wait longer and they should stop touching timeless classics because that doesn't really need to be reinterpreted uh, in my opinion most of the time some of those films but like seriously like a lot of the movies you probably even like like the oceans franchise like those are technically remakes of like sinatra and his gang and a lot of hollywood movies are remakes if, if that makes sense yeah hmm. I haven't said Titanic. I, I'm going alphabetically, and we're in the C section. <laughs> I'm going through the library here. And I'm starting with like A, and we're only at C. Yeah. Uh, Camelot. So uh, 1967's Camelot. I wouldn't recommend it, but like it's it's a it's like a three. Actually, how long is this movie? One one second. I got I gotta check this because this movie's ridiculous. Yeah, it's a three-hour-long musical drama that is about like I think like the infidelity of like Guinevere and like Camelot. Yeah, Camelot 1967. But the set pieces are really really good, and it, it's an interesting watch. But it's not one I would recommend people. But yeah, Camelot 19, 1967. That's, a, that's an interesting film. This is next one. Uh, Captain America movies. Eh, whatever. Uh, Casablanca, or Casablanca, which is like one of the greatest films ever made. It is a beautiful romance film. The, the chemistry between the two leads is remarkable. Uh, Casablanca is like a masterpiece in, in filmmaking, and the art style of like the, the film in, in black and white is just so incredible. It, it looks fantastic, that movie. It's it's so good. Uh, Christmas Vacation, obviously, like, your one must-watch Christmas movie. The quintessential Christmas movie film. Uh, yeah, Christmas Vacation is uh, a perfect masterpiece that you have to watch that perfectly captures, like, the, the husband, the, the man of the house trying to keep the entire family together and, and going through Christmas. So, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Band of Brothers. Uh, very, very good cinematic hardcore hitting movie. Or, uh, series. Yeah, limited series. Click? Click is a really good movie. Click Click made me feel. <laughs> yeah, cl Click made me feel. Okay, so here, I was talking earlier about the, uh, the Lizard Troop or whatever. I think they're called, like, the Lizard Troop or something, and it's, like, the, the Starship, or not Starship Troopers. Oh, this is not Starship Troopers, it's the, uh, Super Troopers, those guys. Oh, I don't know why I was saying Starship Troopers. Yeah, the Super Troopers people. So they make this movie, it's called Club Dread. I think it's their best work. I highly recommend it. It's a great mystery slasher comedy. Don't read about it. Don't watch anything about it unless you watch it. It's actually a very, very good movie. It's got great twists. It's a great slasher horror comedy movie. Very, very well done. It's very adult. Very, very adult, but it's a very, very good film. Yeah. Again, these are just movies I have, guys. They're they're not like I don't have every movie that I love. It's just these are what I have. And I haven't added to this in like seven years, I think, or something. Uh Clue, which is one of the best comedies ever made. Uh and with multiple endings, obviously. Uh Clue is 
it's so good. It's it's funny. It's ridiculous. It's got a, an incredible cast of characters. Great twists, great turns. Clue is amazing. Uh, Commando, Arnold Schwarzenegger blowing people up. Lots of fun. Very, very good. Uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, which is an all-time classic horror film. I watched it in 3D uh, pre-COVID with a couple of my friends, which was a really special fun night. Uh, it's I think it holds up very well as a horror film. Creature from the Black Lagoon is really, really good. Really, really good movie. Uh, Daphne and Velma, which is like a pretty low-budget kind of movie. I don't remember if that was good or terrible. Your Deadpool's... Uh, the original Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, or, well, I guess it's not technically the original, but the one that has, uh, Steve Martin and Michael Caine. It's very, very good. Uh, it's a, got a great, like, they're kind of con men to a degree, and yeah, that movie's really good. Uh, it's got, like, a bit of a romance angle to it as well. Very, very good game, or good film, yeah. Donnie Darko I, I have, indeed, but not for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, not for a long time. Again, guys, just, just keep in mind, I have a library of movies I've curated. I don't have a lot of... I don't have everything, and I haven't added to it in, like, literally several years, but, like, this is just what I have in case you're wondering about stuff. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Strange, yeah. Uh, Dodgeball, which... Uh, Apparently they're working on a sequel for it, but Dodgeball, it's, it's actually a pretty good movie with like a great cast of characters, like a great cast. It's pretty funny, it's pretty decent, if you can dodge a ball, you can dodge a wrench. Yeah. Uh, that terrible Doom Annihilation in 2019. Oh, here's a fun one for you. Dr. Horrible Sing Along, which is something I believe you can watch on YouTube for free. It's a musical about, like, it's a short musical, so I think it's only, like, let me check how long it is. It's, it's only, it's under 45 minutes, so it's like 42 minutes long. And it's got uh, Neil Patrick Harris, he's aspiring to be a villain. It's got Nathan Fillion as the cocky hero that's in, I think he's Mr. Invincible or something like that. And then the love interest for Dr. Horrible is Felicia Day, and it's it's just a really fun, easygoing, like, little musical thing. It's it's very, very good. And funny. Like, it's it's a it's mostly, like, a comedy musical. It's, it's very, very entertaining. And like I said, I think it's on YouTube, if I'm not crazy, and I think you can watch it that way, but it's, it's a bit of an oldie. It's from, like, the uh, earlier days of the internet in regards to, like, Larger projects, if that makes sense, but yeah, Dr. Horrible's uh, Sing Along is, is what it's called, yeah. Am I really gonna stream public domain films on here? I mean, I'd like to. Yeah. I mean, I definitely would like to. Martin and Kane, yeah, that's the, that's what I was talking about for Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Uh, Dracula 1931, which I haven't watched. Dracula Dead and Loving It. Okay, I really like this one, so uh, yeah, Dracula, Dead and Loving It. It's a comedy movie with uh, Leslie Nielsen, who, one of the all-time great comedians, who is a dramatic actor. If you've only seen him in, like, uh, like Airplane or is it Police Squad, like he's, or it's not Police Squad, well, Police Squad is the show, but uh, The Naked Gun, like he is, uh, you should see him in a drama, because I, I saw him in a drama musical, and it's so weird, because it's it just doesn't, like, your mind doesn't register it, because you see him as a comedian, but yeah, Dracula Den loving it, he's playing Dracula, uh, it's, it's, it's a Mel Brooks movie, and you know, Mel Brooks is like, uh, he's, he's a vampire slayer, and it's, it's very, very funny. There's like a scene where they're doing like a staking and it's like, oh, you've got nowhere to stand. And it's, it's, it's very, very funny. Yeah, Dracula Dead Loving it. I, I really like that movie. Yeah. Uh, Easy A, which is one of the earlier Emma Stone films. She's great in it. It's kind of about being like a little slutty and stuff. And uh, yeah, that one is... I think a pretty good one. Like I, I thoroughly enjoyed that when I was younger too, as Emma Stone was uh, 
obviously even, well, I don't know if even more attractive back in the day, but, you know, when I was younger, Emma Stone was obviously, like, a bit of a draw. She's actually, uh, I'd actually say a pure uh, draw as, like, a movie star, because her movies all do pretty well, her projects and stuff, and, uh, yeah, Easy A is a fun movie. Very, very fun movie. Yeah. Dracula with Keanu Reeves? I've, I've watched that one. That, it's not called Dracula, is it? I think there's a different name. Keanu Reeves is so bad in that movie. That, that was the movie where I kind of realized that I, I don't think Keanu Reeves can, like, actually, like, act. <laughs> He's more just, like, kind of himself, if that makes sense. And, and not hating on the guy, he's, he's great. You know what I mean? Like, he's a uh, fellow Canadian stuff, right? Yeah, he's, he's great, but he's not really an actor. He was just basically doing, like, a surfer bro thing in that movie. Was it called Dracula? I thought it had a different name, didn't it? It's Bram Stoker's Dracula, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's the actual name of that one. Bram Stoker's Dracula in that movie. The, the, see, the, the sad thing is, is that movie is really, really good, but it becomes terrible because Keanu is so bad at it, it takes you out of the movie. Because, like, uh, Nos, Nosferatu, the, like, Dracula is, is terrifying looking, the set pieces are gorgeous, uh, Winona Ryder is, is great, uh, and then it's just like Keanu's just like doing a surfer bro thing in that movie, and it just ruins the whole film. Honestly. Like, he, he completely ruined, like, he just, he, like, you can't take any part of it seriously because he takes you out of it. I'm so sorry to say that, Keanu, but, like, it's, it's, it's true, yeah. Uh, he, he is, he is, uh, arguably a terrible actor, like, Keanu is fun, I love watching any of the movies he's in, but he's not a good actor. At least I can't think of any movies where he's, like, a genuinely, like, an actor where he, like, you know, axe axe. It's like The Rock. Like a lot of people like The Rock. He's charismatic, but The Rock is not an actor. He's not good. Like uh, like Batista, he is an actor. Hell, after seeing uh, Peacemaker, I believe John Cena is an actor. But yeah, no. Sorry. Right. Yeah. What movie scares me the most? Uh, I would say. The Conjuring films are the, the most terrifying things I watch. And I, I have an issue where I don't really find things scary, but like the Conjuring movies, I legitimately get terrified of. The most horrifying experience I've ever had watching something was screening The Haunting of Hill House, The Neck Lady. Like, I was screening that at like 3 or 4 a.m. when it was like not out yet, and I was like legitimately having trouble sleeping. <laughs> it, was, it was really funny, but... Yeah, that, the Conjuring films, I think, are the, the scariest things I watch. I was brought up to not really find horror very, like, scary, so I typically don't find horror films very terrifying, honestly. Which sounds weird, but, like, I was always kind of taught to, like, kind of laugh at it and stuff. I think it was more my parents wanted to watch whatever, and they didn't want kids holding them back from being able to watch stuff. <laughs> Because when I was younger, like, I, you know, when I was little, I watched, like, Dead Like Me when it was airing, I think. Yeah, I believe when it was airing, it seemed like CSI and stuff, and it's like... Yeah, things don't really phase me as much. So, yeah. Dead Like Me is a great show, by the way. Very, very good show. Uh, they're like Grim Reapers. Yeah, it's kind of great. Oh, da 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 Hmm. Hereditary. Ugh, well, I mean, it's more like scary. We're not talking about creepy, right? Vin Diesel. He's charismatic. I'm trying to think of a Vin Diesel movie where he actually acts in it. Uh, like a legitimately moving thing. Because it's like, I, I find that comedians actually give the best dramatic performances, personally. Like, yeah. I forgot to tell you guys to like the stream like 10 minutes ago. Just just make sure you're liking the stream. If you're not, you know, or channel membership and all that stuff, you guys should probably do that to support the content here. Yeah. Okay, Alfred Hitchcock is, is amazing. So, like, 
on, we have this thing, so it was called TMN Go in Canada, which has like movies and like HBO kind of stuff, and then it got, and then our media cartel ran by Bell, uh, they turned it into Crave. So I don't know if it was TMN Go or Crave, but they had a Hitchcock specialty uh, kind of viewing thing, and I watched a whole bunch of Hitchcock films, so I'd love to, I don't really have them in my library. But I'll, I'll take a second to pull my phone off the charger and I'll, I'll talk about Hitchcock films briefly. Because Hitchcock, Hitchcock films are, are incredible films, but I specifically want to talk about certain ones that I think are great. I'm actually really disappointed. Uh, they're doing Kubrick run in Canada, but none of the Kubrick films are playing where I live, so I can't watch any of them, which sucks. Because I wanted to watch uh, Eyes Wide Shut and stuff like that, but yeah, not playing here. So Hitchcock. So Hitchcock is is a master of filmmaking, and his films continue to get more and more aggressive as they go on, as he tries to push the boundaries of like what's allowed in film at that time. Because they were doing like I think the Hayes Code and stuff was coming into effect, but basically the guy, uh, his his films continue to get more and more uh, aggressive and more violent, and their themes uh, more and more grotesque at at that time, which was really really interesting. Uh, the TV show, it's called Dead Like Me, is, is the TV show. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up the Hitchcock films. So obviously there's Psycho, which is like a classic horror film, the thing with the shower. Uh, Vertigo, I absolutely love. So, so Vertigo, there's actually a game I played, which doesn't really have anything to do with the movie, but there's a Vertigo game, which I actually think is really cool, and it's got a good mystery if you guys ever buy it cheap and have like a fun night with it. It kind of plays like a Telltale game, but Vertigo is, is actually pretty cool, and it's called Alfred Hitchcock, Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo, and it's like a game. And there's a great mystery, so don't read into it and stuff, but like it's a low-budget, kind of fun, psychological thriller. So that one's really good. Yeah, so Kubrick is, is brilliant, 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 yeah. Uh, so yeah, Vertigo is, is really, really great. I, I love that film. And, uh, yeah, so that one, like, the, the Kubrick films are really good, and you shouldn't read about them before you watch them. Like, you should let them showcase to you what they are. But, uh, yeah, Vertigo is, is such a great film. And I'm trying to think of the best way to tell you the plot without telling you the plot. And it's, it's basically, it's about Vertigo, but there's, like... More of a mystery going on is a really really cool film yeah psycho for the first time yeah yeah but which psycho did you watch sarcaster uh rear window which i think might be my favorite of that Ugh. so rear view window is is incredible it's it's about a guy who's like he's injured and he's doing like people watching through binoculars and there's like this lovely lady that's with him and he sees what he thinks is is a murder and he like he watches and observes and he's tries he kind of tries to investigate but he's like you know again he's injured and there's the sense of danger and intrigue of a guy that can only like like you can't really do anything right and you're just watching through these binoculars and it's so masterfully well done the suspense is great it's it's a great movie Enemy down. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So that one, I, I really like rear view window. It's really, really good. I don't like this map. I should have backed out of it. Honestly. I don't know why I stuck with this. Uh, we're we're going to continue the Kubrick stuff. Uh, the Birds, which is, I think, a pretty good horror film that will make you, whenever you see like a flock of birds, go like, The Birds! The Birds! And that one, it's just kind of, it's a bunch of birds that, like, attack people and stuff. It's not really anything, like... I don't think it has the same crazy material as his other films, but, like, it's a fun watch, and it's an easy-to-recommend watch. So, yeah, The Birds is, like, a bit of a, a classic movie. It, that one is really, really neat. Yeah, so The the Birds is an easy recommend as, as well. Yeah. Kubrick, I mean Hitchcock. Sorry if I'm missing any of this stuff up. I'm obviously tired and trying to play and stream and everything like that. So we're talking about Hitchcock films. 
uh, north by northwest, which I think is uh, a very good action thing. So they had a lot of, of Hitchcock films where he was essentially uh, working with uh, Stewart, if, if that makes sense. Uh, and he was really, really good in all of these movies, but this one I think is Cary Grant, isn't it? Is North by Northwest? Uh, but a lot of them in this leading man was was Stewart, which was a great kind of everyman. Yeah, James Stewart. He was in Rear Window, and a number like he was a good everyman. Yeah, murder across the building. Again, don't spoil things for people in the chat guys. Hmm. You watch the birds in school? No way. No way you watch the birds in school. <laughs> what year did you go to school and you watch the birds? Like, like, I can't believe they would actually show that to kids. I almost refuse to believe that that is the thing. It's not like it's terrifying, but it's like, it's not really like a, a school movie has to say, right? The birds, you guys are killing me. Yeah. Hmm. Anyways, I'm, I'm trying my best to play the game and give you a coherent chat of my, my library and also talk about these movie plots. I'm, I'm doing what I can. We, we still have a lot of movies to go to on, on my end, which is kind of funny. There's other there's other Hitchcock films I need to talk about. We're not done yet. Uh, Rebecca, I've never actually watched. But I've heard that one's really, really good. But I've, I've never actually seen that movie. I think I watched the Netflix redo of it, but I don't know. I don't think I really liked it. But apparently the original Rebecca is, is very, very well done. So hopefully at some point I'll get to watch that. Yeah. And there's another one, I'm trying to remember the name of it, where he's on like a train. And that one's really, really great. Yeah, there's like one where they're on a train. I'll have the name of it in a sec here, but I'm like on a kill streak, so I don't know, like mess that up if that makes sense. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, you can talk about the films, but I think it's good for people that haven't seen them to, uh, you know, be able to get, uh, like, a synopsis without it being spoiled. What is the one where he's on the train? Oh my god. Could, does anyone know what the one is when he's on the train? In high school? I that seems crazy. <sighs> it's not the man who knew too much, which is kinda cool. Is it strangers on a train? There's there's one on a train that's like really, really good. Or well it's not all on a train, but like it keeps because it's like there's rich people and they're doing tennis stuff and they're on a train. Sometimes there's like a tennis tournament thing and there's like somebody's I think frame for murders. It's a really good movie. Really, really good movie. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, there's also Rope. So Rope is a very, very good film. Uh, kind of about the idea of... I guess like the concepts of it are like society and murder and the ideas of, of the two in kind of combination. And it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because it's, it's basically this party and these two guys have like murdered someone and they're talking about this person to people that know and care about this person and yeah it's it's, it's a very interesting film in, in concept and in what it is and yeah rope is, is very very interesting strangers on a train so that is the one i'm thinking about yeah so strangers on a train probably a little lesser talk of the, the hitchcock films but very very good uh, i would highly highly recommend that one i just the way they do things the presentation of it, the usage of the train, it's very, very good movie. I, I really like that one. Yeah. Hmm. Anyways, uh, it has been a while, so be sure to like the stream. Subscribing's great. Donations cool. Consider becoming a channel member. Channel member gifting. The Patreon option, the Discord, the stream alerts, chatter, and OK Times. It's also an Amazon store affiliate link, and yeah, that's it. We have more movies to go over. I'm only on, I think, D on my list of my movies. I'm not even done the Hitchcock films that we're segueing onto. Damn it. 
when you go in blind. Th that's what I'm saying is like, I do want people that are like, you know, maybe never even hearing about these films before, because some people are younger. And that's why I'm saying like, talk about them, give synopsis for people, but let them go in blind because they want to discover these Hitchcock films better going in blind, right? At least that's the idea that I kind of have for these ones. So that people can like experience them like I did and be like, ooh, aha. Uh -huh. And see the magic of, uh, of Hitchcock in action. And again, as his films went on, it, it'd be really cool if you could actually watch his films, you know, you as someone maybe interested in watching them, watch them kind of in order, like chronologically, of when he released them, because you get to see how they become. Uh, more ruthless and aggressive with each release. That person has 80 kills? Oh my god. How? How does he have 80 kills? How is that possible? A big streak in the 70s? I mean, we're not really at that point. We're kind of talking about the, uh, the Hitchcock films, which again we're we're not done yet. There's there's more. I feel like I should have more off the top of my head actually for the names of these ones, but yeah. Oh, Dial M for Murder. That one is really really good. So that one's like a. It's it's kind of like an arranged murder with a bit of like a like a detective kind of like angle to it, and yeah, Dial M for Murder is, is very, very good. Most of the Hitchcock films are, are excellent, but yeah, Dial M for Murder is a very, very good one. Make sure you're writing these down, guys. <laughs> yeah, Dial M for Murder. And then there's... I get through all these. We talked about North by Northwest, the man who knew too much. Marnie? I'm trying to wonder if I've seen that one. Shadow of a Doubt. There's one where there's like vicious murders and something about potatoes. Saboteur. That one's interesting. I don't know if it's as strong as his other films, but Saboteur is kind of an interesting. I don't know if you call it a whodunit almost, but yeah, that one's pretty intense saboteur, yeah. Uh, blackmail, that's murder. Hmm. I don't know what that, there's one where there's like a little bit with like a creepy thing with it, like potatoes and stuff. I'm trying to remember what it's called. It might be Marnie. It might be Marty. I think that summarizes the Hitchcock films. Yes, that emote is perfect there. Starcaster with the, the popcorn and stuff. Anyways, I, I hope we can get back to my film library here. I think I've covered the Hitchcock films mostly. At least the ones that are like, you know, easy to suggest and be like, hey, watch these movies. So you come to the streams, you get it all here, guys. And if you're new to the streams, we do stream each day around this time, so there's always something going on. Yeah, I got your films for you. Rope was excellent, it is. So, Frenzy is the one I'm talking about? Okay, good. Because, like, Frenzy is, is just, like, sort of... I, I want to say Hitchcock at a more, like, savage level in regards to, like, the material being a lot more aggressive and straight-up, like, murder and stuff. And yeah, that one is, is very interesting. Because, as I said, there, there is a certain going level of, like, brutality to his filmmaking as he went on with his career, which is interesting. Yeah, with <laughs> the potatoes. You know what I'm talking about with the potato thing? It's like, ugh. yeah, potato stuff. Not like the Martian, but like, you know, potato stuff. Damn it. Throw Mama from a train? Oh my god. Okay, let's get back to my list of movies. Elf? I mean... I guess it's a modern Christmas classic elf, so I don't need to talk about that. I've got uh, the Evil Dead movies. You know, Evil Dead 1, 2, Army of Darkness. Great films, fun horror f films, pretty fun, pretty enjoyable. So I don't really need to talk about the Evil Deads. 
I have a ton of export sequence clips, which I don't understand what those are doing in my library, so I'm gonna quickly delete 119 of those. Why this? Uh, oh, the Fantastic Four movies, which I kind of like from the 2000s. That's got... Uh, what's your name in it? Uh, Jessica Alba and stuff when she was in her prime, and uh, I, I, I kind of like those films. They're, they're not amazing, but I, 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 I kind of like them. So, yeah. Let's see, where are we at? Uh, the original Frankensteins, which I haven't watched, and the Friday the 13th movies. Which vary in quality from aggressively horrible to pretty great. I'd say the first three Friday the 13th movies are quite enjoyable, excellent films. The first one being the best. And then they get worse and worse. Uh, Jason X is funny. And then the other ones, the reboot ones, are terrible. Do I follow certain directors? Uh, there's some directors that I, I favor in enjoyment. Uh, obviously, Wes Anderson is my favorite, but uh, there there are a number of directors I do really like their kind of movies specifically. But yeah, Friday the Thirteenth, uh, Frosty the Snowman, I also have Frosty Returns, which is I love that one. Uh, Galaxy Quest, which is a satirical kind of take on Star Trek. Never give up, never surrender. Galaxy Quest is is pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Uh, Game Night, which I think is one of the best comedies of the modern era. It perfectly makes fun of, like, board games, but also in a fun setting, Jason Bateman and Rachel McAdams, I think. Those two are... The, the chemistry between those two is incredible for that film. I'm still waiting for a sequel. Uh, Game Night is hilarious. So well done. Uh, Get Smart, which has, I think The Rock's in that one, and uh, Steve Carell, and Anne Hathaway, and it's not like a great movie, but it's kind of an enjoyable, sort of easygoing action comedy movie, and I don't mind it, and I kind of like it, so yeah, Get Smart. Hmm. Oh, this is hard point. For a second there, I thought we were playing headquarters, and I was like, ugh. Friendly UAV on station. Uh -oh. We're only on the G list. We got a lot to go through here. Yeah. Uh, Goon. So I have the Goon movies. Those are like hockey films where. I think it's the husband of, like, Kirsten Bell. I'm trying to think of what his name is. But he's, like, a fighter and enforcer in hockey. But he wants to be a good hockey player. Like, it's really brutal and violent, but... It's okay. Like, it's... it's like, I'd say they're pretty enjoyable if you like hockey films. I mean, Slapshot's better, but yeah. Hmm. You're a James Bond fan? I, I love the James Bond movies to varying levels. I've done a couple James Bond marathons in my life, and those movies are radically different in quality. Hopefully someday I go through a Bond marathon again. I'm hoping at some point I meet a, a long-term love interest and we sit there and watch all the Bond films. I've, I've always wanted to actually do reviews of all the Bond movies, like written reviews. So someday, hopefully, I will sit there and go through all the Bond movies. Yeah, Game Night is really, really good. Dak Shepard, that's the guy. Uh, Grandma's Boy, which is kind of a funny look at game development, I guess, in the 2000s. Uh, it's, it's an interesting film, that one. It's, it's a bit of, it's a stoner movie, I guess you would say, right? Like, yeah, Grandma's Boy, it's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I think that one has like the original Xbox and stuff in it too, which is kind of funny. Fuck me, I'm just getting slaughtered this match. Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, obviously pretty easy stuff. You know, the basic Marvel things. A lot of basic Marvel stuff. Hmm. Uh, 
Okay, I, I gotta like focus up and get some kills going on in this one. Do I have a favorite actor for Marvel movies? In, in like what sense? Like favorite character or something like that? From the Marvel movies? Uh, the, like I don't know, does, uh, does Tobey Maguire count? I, I love his Spider-Man films. They're, he's great. Yeah. Spider-Man movies are excellent. Uh, we have Hail Caesar, which I think is actually one of the weaker Coen Brother movies, except for when they do separate Coen Brother movies. But, uh, yeah, Hail Caesar is, is really, really good. Like, I kind of like it because it's like a look at old time Hollywood, and it's got gorgeous set design, lots of great actors. It's a little bit of a film that speaks about, uh, I don't, I don't know, political type stuff. How the fuck did that guy kill me? What? Oh, his teammate saved him. Okay. Because I was like, what? I knew I shouldn't have went for the assassination. Or the execution. Should have just got the kill there. It's too small of a map to execute people. So, yeah, I would say... That one is, is interesting. Yeah. That one is is interesting, Hail Caesar. It's it's more about like if you like the history of Hollywood, that film kind of resonates with that kind of stuff pretty well, I think. And a lot of pretty good actors in it, like actually really good actors in it. Kind of yeah, Clooney and uh, yeah, some other stuff like that. My favorite Coen Brothers movie? Oh. Hmm. 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 I oddly really love Oh Brother Where Are Thou, but I would say Barton Fink is my favorite Coen Brothers movie. Which is John Goodman and, uh, I'm trying to think of the other guy's name, but it's like, he's like a writer and it's, it's a very interesting film, Barton Fink. It's, it's very intriguing. Uh, yeah, that one I, I think is my favorite Coen Brothers movie, I would say. But I strangely like Where, Where Brother Are Thou. I actually enjoy musicals a lot. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, the Halloween movies, Happy Death Day, which I'm still waiting for hopefully a third one at some point. I don't know if the Happy Death Day movies are amazing or something like that, but they're kind of fun, and, and the, the actress, she, the lead actress, she just kind of carries those films, in my opinion. Uh, His Girl Friday, which I haven't seen. The Hot Shots. Uh, okay, so Hot Shots Part 2 is a great comedy movie with uh, Charlie Sheen in it, and it kind of makes fun of, like, action hero movies, and it's actually pretty funny, and it's one of those... Okay, I want to say it's like in the vein of like airplane and stuff, but like, yeah, it's it's a good comedy thing where it's parodying stuff. And... Hilariously, I've never seen the first one, but yeah, Hot Shots Part, uh, part Dux is, is, is actually pretty funny. Yeah. And it's got his uh, father in it too, and they run around each other. What, what do they say they like? I loved you in, I don't think it's Platoon or something, but they like, yeah, it's, it's a pretty funny movie, and it's ridiculous, and it's ridiculous, but it's it's pretty entertaining. Yeah, that's, that's a really good one. Pretty good, yeah. Hmm, let's see what else we got here. Hot Fuzz. It's an easy choice. Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, great comedy, great murder mystery kind of thing, detective movie. It's got action. It's got ridiculousness, goriness. Yeah, I, I really like that one. That Hot Fuzz is so good. And I think I've run out of new things to watch, but it's one of those movies where if you watch it a few times, you'll notice like new things every time through it. And yeah, Hot Fuzz is a lot of fun. Yar. Yeah, we are. Hot Files is, is very, very good. Very, very good. So, yeah, Hot Files is really good. Do I like Tarantino movies? Yep. 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 
Uh, How Do You Know, which is probably my favorite terrible movie. It literally sent Jack Nicholson into retirement. It's Owen Wilson, Reese Witherspoon, and uh, Paul Rudd. And Paul Rudd is like a guy working for his father, Jack Nicholson, in this like in this uh, like lawyers thing. I think they're the lawyers or something like that. Or no, they're business people. They're business people. And basically, he's being indicted by the U.S. government. And he comes across Reese Witherspoon, who is a softball star, and she kind of is dealing with a hardship part of her career, and she's into Owen Wilson, who's a big baseball star, which doesn't make any sense at all. And it's just kind of this, like, really kind of fun romance film about a guy who's just, like, super down on his luck and, and really likes this lady, and the two of them really kind of connect, and it's just kind of, like, a fun romance film of, like, hoping that things work out for you romantically and hoping somebody kind of feels the same and yeah it's again it's it's a, it's objectively a terrible film but I, I always like that one it's it's a nice easy fun watch for me yeah it's called how do you know and it was like the budget for it was ridiculous it was a huge bomb and like i said it literally caused jack nicholson to retire from movies and i i love that movie Okay, that's a gunship. Aw, oh, damn it, I didn't get the juggernaut. Hot Rod? Ugh, I might like Hot Rod more now, but like, I, I'm, I'm not as huge on Hot Rod as everyone else seems to be. How to Lose Friends and Alienate People? That's a Simon Pegg movie with, I think, Megan Fox in it, and he becomes like a cocky kind of film star. I don't think it's really amazing or anything, but kind of a fun, weird one to have in the library. Yeah. So that one's interesting. Something about a watch in that movie, too. And I know Megan Fox is in it. Hmm. Yeah, how to lose friends and alienate people. Where are these guys at so I can kill them? I'm just trying to rock the, uh, the gunship here. I miss the old days where there was no spawn protection. And you can just wail on people. You know what I'm talking about? Target area marked, you're cleared hot. Oh, hi, Sherry. How you doing? Love the Sherry advantage, by the way. Thanks, Sherry. You're the best. Hmm. 2012, that movie is a terrible disaster film. Just gonna throw it out there. Terrible disaster film. I know some people like it, but like, eh, eh. Were, those were silly times. Uh, I, Tanya, which is a great Margaret Robbie as a figure skater doing crazy stuff. I need to go to the bathroom again, so we'll have to continue this. We're only on the H section? Oh my god, this is gonna take forever. Here, enjoy me with an alpaca, and I'll be back in a sec.
Greece, I, I missed that map. We haven't had that in a while. Where's the fox, dude? I'm so skinny in that gif. Am, am I not skinny now? What, what, what are you saying? I'm so skinny in that gif. That was from this year! Do you, <laughs> what, do I look fat now? <laughs> yeah. That's weird. Yeah, I've, I've actually, like... There's only like a 10 pound difference between 2022 and 2023, honestly, for that. But yeah, I've never been so skinny, honestly, for weight wise. It's crazy. Yeah, Sherry blesses the, the skill based matchmaking. And hopefully, your likes on the stream. Subscribing is great, donations cool. Consider becoming a channel member. Channel member gifted the Patreon option, the Discord for stream alerts, chatter, and aggressively okay times. There's also an Amazon store affiliate link. Grab anything on there, use the link in the video description. Fuck. Yeah, maybe it's the angle? No, I, I am really skinny in that shot. Uh, we have the Indiana Jones movies, minus the, the Dial of Destiny, because it's garbage. <laughs> but uh, yeah, obviously the Indiana Jones films. Uh, the Last Crusade is my favorite. Obviously, an iconic trilogy of movies, plus uh, two later ones that yeah, I guess some could argue should maybe never have existed, which I think is fair. Yeah. Maybe it's the angle. No, no, it's not a caster. I'm, I'm incredibly. I, I still well, I put on I think three pounds or something since then, since Christmas. But yeah, I, I weigh like. I weigh less than I did in high school. I'm kind of technically at the peak of my weight, I guess. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. I, I really am that skinny, but uh, yeah, thanks. I don't know if the can like the webcam angle ever shows it or the pictures I do ever shows it, but I, I am actually like a little, little, little bit too lean, almost. Yeah, a little bit too lean, almost. Hmm. Anyways. See guys, Zara's a gal, so it's more complimentary when they when Zara says it. Uh what do we got next? The Iron Man movies. Uh Isle of Dogs, which is a very fun stop motion Wes Anderson movie. And uh Yeah, it's 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 good. It's very entertaining. It's about a bunch of dogs in Japan. It's got some of the best looking food I've ever seen in a movie, but it's it's stop motion done and yeah, it's a Wes Anderson film, so it's quirky, weird, uh, great voice cast of dogs. Uh, nice little story. So yeah, Isle of Dogs is a, a very fun movie and a, a very good watch. So Isle of Dogs. Damn it. What else we got here? It. Yeah, and then the John Wick movies, and then the Johnny English movies. I I like the uh, the Rowan Atkinson kind of stuff. I know they're not great films, but the Johnny English movies are enjoyable. They're good laughs. I like each of them, as dumb and silly as they are. They are enjoyable movies. I know they also don't resonate domestically, but they're still fun movies, and they're making a new one, actually. They're making one final Johnny English film. And I say, bring it on. So, yeah, I'm excited. He's a ridiculous, what can I say? Yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Julius Caesar from 1953, which I don't think I've watched yet. Jumanji, your various Jurassic World movies. <laughs> the, the Kim Possible 2019 movie, <laughs> which I think was okay. Like I remember it being okay, and they, I don't think they ever did any more. But yeah, I remember that being all right. I think I, I got that because my sister enjoyed uh, the Kim Possible movie, so I thought that would be a a funny time. <laughs> the, yeah, the Kim Possible movie, the live action one. Yeah. It's kind of hilarious. Man, when you play at 120 FPS, it's just better. Yeah. 
Hmm. Yeah, Zerg caster, they're judging my weight. See, this is what I'm talking about for the ridiculous beauty standards that I have to uphold when I'm doing my work. Skinny, but not skinny enough. How much more weight do I have to lose? Uh, when will you ever be satisfied? Ow. Now the stupid, uh... What are those called? The things that block your, uh, grenades. I hate them so much. That's the worst thing they, they added to this game, is the, uh... These stupid little things. Yeah, okay. Where are we at? We're at the Jays, uh, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. It was supposed to be a five-part epic King Arthur storyline, and... Or King Arthur storyline, and that never happened from Guy Ritchie with with the signature style and action. I'm very disappointed we never got all five of them, but you know, it sucks to suck. The budget was too high, the CGI, yeah, it was generally an okay to solid movie. A lot of people disliked it. Yeah, so we never got the five movies, but it was supposed to be a big five part epic. But I think his current universe. The guy Rishi's doing well, so hopefully that keeps going. The trophy system, yeah, I, I fucking hate the trophy system. Uh, the Kingsman movies, Skull Island uh, from Kong, and uh, La La Land, which I love. Uh, great romantic musical movie, great musical segments. Uh, Emma Stone shines in that film. We were driving in a snowstorm, 20 something minutes, so it was like 30 minutes, and then the parking lot being full, so I couldn't watch it, and I had to come back another time, and still being involved with that movie. One of the greatest cinematic experiences I've ever had, watching La La Land in, in theater. It was, uh, it was beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful movie. Yeah, I love that one. The sexy smoldering beast, that's, that's what I hear. You, did I see the spaghetti you ate, Zero? How would I see the spaghetti you ate? Where, where is the spaghetti? You, you ate spaghetti? We're talking about movies. What, what, what is this about spaghetti? It's, uh, we don't have Eminem in here. Another lorry in this economy? No. I wish we had another lorry. I never financially recovered. Lady Bird? I've never watched that one, though. Last Action Hero. So this is a movie that bombed, but it's like a great satirical take on action films. It's got Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it's about this kid that transport like has a special ticket that like puts him into the movie, and yeah, it just makes fun of action films. It's it's very very good and a great action film, and there's a lot of heart in it, and it's a very enjoyable film. So, yeah, a lot of meta stuff, too. So, Last Action Hero with Arnold Schwarzenegger is uh, very good. Hmm. Uh, it kind of sucks that wasn't, like, a, a hit back in the day when it came out, but, like, it, it is a, a very good movie. Yeah. He sent a picture of spaghetti on the Discord. Uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll take a second out of streaming, shooting, and talking about movies to uh, take a look at... Or spaghetti. It's better be some damn good looking spaghetti, I'm gonna tell you. Damn good looking spaghetti. I gotta be honest with you, Zero, that looks like some pretty fucking depressing uh, spaghetti, man. <gasps> you, could you send a picture of the garlic bread that you apparently ate? I, I wanna see a picture of the garlic bread. I'm, I'm sorry, this just looks like run of the bill spaghetti. Oh, I see the garlic bread's up there. That looks good. I like the look of the garlic bread. The spaghetti. Eh. I've I've seen better. I've seen better. Lady Hawk. Lady, I haven't actually watched Lady Hawk, and Lady Hawk as a movie pisses me off because I really one of my favorite uh, singers is named Lady Hawk, and I keep trying to get a Lady Hawk first edition vinyl record <laughs> and all that ever shows up is that fucking lady hawk movie vinyl but i want lady hawks lady hawk vinyl like first edition 
and you just like you can't get them and they're like out of print and they did a reprint but it was like 93 dollars and i was like Ugh. but yeah so that the lady hawk movie i've never watched it but it pisses me off because it interrupts my searches for a vinyl of lady hawk's lady hawk album which i love i love that album it's a picture of her with like kind of like a game controller and it's like sort of colorful and uh, she's got like cats on it. And it's, it's got some some of my favorite songs on there. And yeah, it's kind of like yeah. So that Lady Hawk movie pisses me off because it interrupts my my vinyl search for that first edition Lady Hawk Lady Hawk album. So there you go. Mushrooms. I, I actually dislike mushrooms. So yeah, it's that that is some of the most generic spaghetti I've ever seen. Zero. Oof. I, I don't even know if that was worth popping up the Discord for. I, I gotta be honest with you. Interstellar. I like Interstellar. I wish I would have saw it in theaters. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't even put it on plate, man. Just leave that. You, you put put in the bare minimum effort, Zero. If you're showing me pictures of food, put in put in some food effort. I'm I'm disappointed. The garlic bread looked nice, but better presentation could be done, honestly. I'm disappointed. You didn't eat it? So you just sent me a picture of spaghetti, had me look at your spaghetti, and you didn't even eat the spaghetti? I... I... I don't understand the conversation we're having. <laughs> I, I don't understand this. Okay. Have you been drinking again, Zero? I do. I, I dislike mushrooms. I, I don't like mushrooms. Yeah, it's 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 not my thing. Sorry. I'm a semi picky eater, I guess. I don't know. Same with onions. I don't like onions or peppers or chives. I don't like little things that you put in food. They drive me crazy. If it's small and weird and thrown into food, I, I tend not to like it. Because it's it's just, it tastes weird. It's like I'm eating something I like, and then there's this other little crap in it. And I don't like that stuff. Anyways, let's keep going on. Uh, we've got, oh, Lily and the Snowman. So this isn't a movie, but it's like a cute, cute, cute short that he used to play during a year or two at Cineplex. So in Canada, we have Cineplex theaters. That's the monopoly of theaters in Canada. And there was this period of time where during the holidays, they would play this little tiny clip before every movie, and it was called Lily and the Snowman. And it's so like emotional and so well done. It really gets you ready to watch a movie. I think it's still on YouTube, but I have it saved just in case. And it's just this really cute thing about like this girl that like movies and she grows up and doesn't have time for like the snowman anymore and then I, th I think it's her daughter she doesn't really have time for her daughter and then they bring out the snowman and the movie thing and it's yeah it's, it's a really lovely little thing probably the best thing cineplex has ever done for canada <laughs> is that little two minute thing tropic thunder yeah you could release that today sure why not i mean there's that magical movie of whatever that came out and got pulled from the theaters yesterday because it was terrible but um yeah you could you can make any movie today it's just whether or not it would resonate with people is the question right yeah they add extra flavors i disagree okay uh logan lucky so that's kind of a fun one with daniel craig and that other guy where they're heisting um Logan Lucky's a really odd, but kind of fun movie. They're like heisting from like NASCAR. Yeah. Channing Tatum's in it. Yeah, they're, they're like heisting as like rednecks and stuff. Uh, Logan, which is obviously really good. Uh, Lord of the Ring movies. Oh, Love in the Afternoon. So this is <laughs> a, a 1957 kind of romance movie. Love in the Afternoon. It's, uh... There's, like, a bit of a weird age gap in it. But, like, Hepburn is, uh... 
just beautiful in that movie. Oh, sub bass. Ugh. Yeah, I don't, I don't play on sub bass, guys. Sorry, I, 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 I don't play. I don't play on sub bass. We're not doing sub bass. Yeah. Yeah, my bad. I, I, I don't play on that map. I, I miss that. I don't play on that one. Uh, Mary Poppins, uh, Mary Poppins movies, uh, The Men in Blacks, Metropolis, which I've never watched. Oh, Midnight in Paris. I really love this film. So this is uh, a movie where Owen Wilson is the main character, and it's like a, it is a comedy, but it's more of a dramatic movie, and it deals with like nostalgia and how every generation is nostalgic for a generation before it. And it's basically he's in modern Paris, and he kind of gets dragged back into the past through a certain situation and meets all these great like writers and stuff. Very cool film. Yeah, very very cool film. Midnight in Paris. I quite like that one. Uh, the Minecraft Holiday Yule Log classic, obviously. Uh, your Mission Impossible movies. Uh, we got Monty Python and the Holy Grail, a classic film. Clomp the clomp the clomp. Uh, the Lady that fell asleep to Back to the Future. We also watched. Monty Python and the Holy Grail, and I think the only thing she remembered from it was the the clomping uh, kind of things, the coconuts. Yeah. Mm, Moonrise Kingdom, which is another very very good Wes Anderson film. It's a coming of age story where two kids go and run away. Uh, she's weird. He's a Boy Scout, and they run away together. And they've got Bruce Willis and uh, Bill Murray. Uh, kind of like working together, but they also have competing elements to them, and it's a great quirky film. It's really adorable and very well put together. Moonrise Kingdom. You watched all three Lord of the Rings. I did too. I, I, one time with was it Mitchell there. We we when we were kids, we watched all three Lord of the Rings together. It was crazy. A bunch of Mortal Kombat crap. Murder by death. Okay, I, I gotta, one second here, I, I gotta check that I make sure that I have the right thing on this one. Murder by Death, I think this is the, the comedy of the greatest. Okay, so, yeah, Murder by Death, it's a comedy mystery film, where the greatest literary uh, characters come together and they try to solve a murder and they all do it in their own weird, weird ways and it's yeah it's called murder by death but it's also like a bit of a satirical thing on the concept of like whodunits and, and murder mysteries I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm correct on this one for, for what this one is but yeah it's murder by death it took forever to find <laughs> it, it, it took forever to find, yeah. Hmm. The best Murray film? Uh, probably Groundhog Day. Yeah. The best build. Uh, either... See, now, I would say Lost in Translation, but that's more of a Scarlett Johansson movie. I, I would say the best Bill Murray movie he's ever done is is Groundhog Day. It's uh, that's a perfect film. Yeah, absolutely perfect film. Yeah, my video about Steam on Xbox. A lot of people did. It was very popular. Well, let's see what else we got here. Nobody. Some Murder on the Orient Expresses. Now you see me. The Ocean movies. Obviously, the Ocean's trilogy. Lots of fun. Very well put. Very well put together films. Uh, Clooney and his squad. I'd love to see them come together one more time. But you know what? They're fun, enjoyable. Ice movies. They're a thing of their time, but very, very well put together. Let's see what we else we got here. Um, old school. So Old School is another fun comedy where it's got some pretty good actors in it. And they're basically... It's, it's a bunch of old guys coming together to have a uh, sorority, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like the, the one guy's like the godfather in it and stuff. And it's pretty funny, like Vince Vaughn runs a... Uh, what does he run? It's fun. He runs like a audio TV kind of place, 
and Will Ferrell is in it as like this guy struggling with deciding about like his marriage and stuff and yeah the bunch of old guys in a sorority and it's a comedy yeah the usual suspects yeah that one's fun hmm I have the Olympic Games from 1924, which is kind of interesting. Literally just the Olympic Games uh, from 1924 restored. And uh, it's an interesting watch of uh, sporting. I, I, I just thought it was kind of fascinating, honestly. Yeah, the Olympic Games from 1924. They have... Uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> it's, it's just literally like Olympic Games and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a fascinating look at the history of, of sport, I guess, technically. It's not even like a documentary or anything, it's literally just the Olympic Games. Yeah. Once Upon a... oh wait, never mind. Uh, Pacific Rim, Phantom of the Opera, which I, I don't think I've watched. Uh, Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping. Which was criminally underloved, that movie is hysterical. It's like making fun of, I guess, pop star kind of like biopics and documentaries and stuff. It's hilarious. Andy Samberg and his crew, great music, very funny cameos, uh, the ASAP Rocky uh, Crunchables, iconic, and yeah. Pop star never stop, never stopping. It's, it's really funny. And it's a shame more people didn't check that one out. Yeah, a real shame, actually. Hmm. Uh, Predator movies. Uh, Ready Player One, which I really love, except for that one line where they talk about closing it down once a day, one day of the week in order to, like, I don't know, people live in the real world. That felt like an out-of-touch old man Spielberg kind of note, but other than that, I really like that movie. It's about the beauty of, of playing games and everything like that, and... Yeah, I like the Ready Player One. Although, it, again, we, we've talked about this many times on the streams. They, they try to make what's-her-name, who's gorgeous. They, they try to make her, like, ugly by giving her, like, a scar or something, or a birthmark, and it's like, fuck right off. She's she's stunning, that woman. <laughs> I was like, this, this is just silly. Just absolutely silly. She's like, oh, you won't like how I look because she's, she's got, like, a birthmark? And I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> It's like you are you're drop dead gorgeous. It's like what are you who are you trying to kid? There's no way this woman has insecurity issues. Get out of here. That I refuse to believe that. Yeah. So there you go on that one. We're only on like the O still or the piece. Jesus. Alright, here we go. Uh Ready or Not, which is I think the last movie I watched before COVID. I actually, was it the last theater movie I watched before COVID? I, I don't know. Ready or Not is a great horror film. It's a survival horror film. And it's basically, they took hide and seek and they turned it into a movie. And it works. And it works. Uh, Samara Weaving, I think is her name. She's great. It's like gory and wild and... Very, very well done. And they're making a sequel. I don't know how, considering it's like pretty closed off, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, Ready or Not, great, great survival horror film. Lots of, lots of fun, that one. Lots of fun. Very, very good. Yeah, I like that one. Pickles. Apparently, deep fried pickles and pickles are a big thing in Canada right now. I don't know why, but all the stores seem to be pushing them, and I, I don't understand it. But yeah, it's a, a big thing in Canada, I guess, the last year. Yeah. And it's been a while. Be sure to like the stream, subscribe, and spread donations. Who will consider becoming channel member? Channel member gifted the Patreon option, the Discord for stream alerts, and the Amazon store for anything. Grab anything on Amazon, use the link in the video description. And I totally have been neglecting all of my streaming duties while I've been streaming, which is ridiculous of me. But I've been having so much ta fun talking about my movies. Because I love films. Yeah, Ready or Not is a really fun ride. Uh, don't read into it and be surprised, because it's really good. We've got uh, the Resident Evil movies, which are varying levels of quality. 
but uh, Djokovic there, she is always fun to watch in some sort of skin-tight outfit shooting zombies and stuff. Yeah. She's, she's always a fun watch. I don't mind the deep-fried pickles thing, but like it's weird that they act in Canada like it's a staple food that everyone eats as pickles. I don't get it. I don't know what that is. Rocky? Yeah, we got a Rockies. Uh, we talked about Rope earlier. Oh, Ruby Sparks. That's kind of an interesting, I think, more indie film. So Ruby Sparks is like, he's a writer and he writes kind of like the woman of his dreams. And she's like real. And then he has to fight with the idea that like someone he wrote is real and perfect for him, but like she's not real because she's perfect and stuff. And it's an interesting kind of movie about that kind of a concept. I, I quite like that one. You know, a little bit of a romance film, I guess. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, classic. Uh, the Rush Hours, Rushmore, which is a very good uh, Wes Anderson film about, I think it was the debut of uh, Jason Schwartzman as a young lad competing with Bill Murray for the love of this school teacher, I guess, but like, obviously he's a kid and it's it's a kind of a misguided youthful love story kind of thing and then he finds his own way through it. It's it's a very good movie because they're like, yeah, it's, it's a good movie. Yeah, Rushmore is, is very, very well done. Very, very well done. Uh, scary movies, funny, funny movies, uh, Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase, which is kind of a shorter movie that I kind of watched when I was younger on, like, like, Teletoon or something like that. Oh, that one's kind of good, and it's Scooby-Doo and the gang go through, like, various levels of, like, a video game and stuff, and kind of fun, kind of cool. Uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Incredible cast of, of actors, uh, you know, Michael Sarah probably at his best. And uh, Elizabeth Winstead, and she's stunning, and it's it's such a good, such a good movie. I, I, I love that one. Good music, good action, great acting. Wow, we are getting smoked. I should have pulled us out of this. Like, I've been doing okay, but I, I didn't realize our score was getting so bad. I'm sitting here talking about movies and not killing people. Yeah. Scrooged with uh, with Bill Murray, which is a good Christmas film about, you know, Scrooge kind of, but he's like a movie executive. Kind of a pretty good film. Really good film. Yeah, Scrooge is a lot of fun. We've got Seven Chances, which is a 1925 film. Some of the stuff hasn't aged the best, but it's still like a really funny like Buster Keaton movie where a guy in order to inherit I think a million dollars or something like that has to get married within one day or a week or something like that. I think it's one day. So he goes around town desperately trying to get someone to marry him. But like he really wants this one lady who's like the love of his life, but he's not too sure if that's an option and he doesn't. Yeah, and he's trying to get married before the uh, time runs out. It was so good they made a game out of it. And an animated reboot, I guess? I, I never watched the reboot on Netflix, but yeah. I love Scott Pilgrim, it's a great movie. Easy watch. Sucks it did so bad in theaters. Uh, we have the Shanghai movies, Shanghai Night, Shanghai Noon, which had Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson. A lot of fun together. Different attitudes, different styles. It's kind of like Rush Hour of the West. I, I really like those ones, they're fun. Uh, Shaun of the Dead, classic uh, horror film. Nick Frost, Simon Pegg. It's kind of like a funny zombie movie, but very, very well done. I don't think I need to dive into that one too much. Uh, Silver Linings Playbook, which I really love. That's a, a great drama with, what is it? Uh, Jennifer Lawrence. 
and this she's trying to like she's broken but she's also with this guy that's really messed up too who's played by bradley cooper and the two of them are like it's, uh, I, I like it as a romance film yeah i kind of enjoy it uh silver streak which is a comedy movie with richard pryor and gene wilder and it's about a train and it's really funny because like he keeps getting like kicked off the train and keeps trying to get back on the train and there's like this deeper thing going on and yeah that's that's a really good one silver streak is what that's called singing in the rain one of my all-time favorite films singing in the rain just singing in the rain a great musical it's about the transition of hollywood from the silent era to the talkie and it's one of the best movies ever made yeah we're almost through guys we're almost to the end like two hours of talking about movies a uh, sleepaway camp which is a great slasher uh don't read anything about it if you want a really good slasher movie with some great twists to it i highly recommend sleepaway camp and yeah sleepaway camp's really good so I married an axe murderer, which is, uh, mm, I don't know how to describe this one. It's kind of a comedy thing where I actually can't think of his name right now. You know, Austin Powers, uh, he's like one of the all time classic comedians. I'm going to try to remember this. Why the hell can't I remember his name? I must be exhausted, I guess. Uh, it's like it's in my mind and all of his characters he's played, but I can't think of his name off the top of my head right now. Hmm. Yeah, I literally can't think of his name, and I don't want to read it in the chat because I should be able to remember it, and I can't. Oh my god. One, one sec here. I actually gotta look this up. This is embarrassing. Mike Myers. Oh my god, that's so embarrassing. Like, I kept thinking of what it was, but I couldn't think of the name. Yeah, Mike Myers, uh, he's, yeah, he marries who he thinks is an ex-murderer and stuff, and it's, it's funny. Felt so I murdered an ex, or married an ex-murderer. Yeah, that's embarrassing. Sleepaway camp, right? I remember watching that, and it was like, everybody's like, don't read about it and watch it, and I was like, okay, and I was like, oh, that's a good one. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. I actually like those films. Uh, we've got, what was the other one there? Oh, Space Jam, the original Space Jam. I like that when I grew up. Objectively terrible film, but, you know, kind of a classic growing up. I like it. It's fun. Bill Murray coming out and stuff. Michael Jordan. It's, it's enjoyable. One Bugs Bunny and the gang. Uh, Spaceballs. Makes fun of Star Wars. Now under the roof of, of Star Wars. With Fox being bought. And Star, yeah, and Disney owns all that. Which is crazy. But yeah, Spaceballs is a lot of fun. If you like Star Wars, it's basically makes fun of it, but also tells a really good original story, too, kind of, and yeah, I guess Captain Marvel, or the Marvels stole that plot in, in their movie, so, yeah. Yeah, Spaceballs is, is really good. Great Mel Brooks movie and performance by Mel Brooks, and, uh, yeah. That one is really good. Very funny. The Shw May the Schwartz be with you. Spaceballs 2, The Search for More Money. It's a real shame they never made that. That is embarrassing, right? It's so embarrassing. Uh, the Spider-Man movies. Uh, Spider-Man 2, obviously one of the... I think the best superhero movie ever made. Especially the Spider-Man 2.1 edition, where you get to see... Uh, uh, what's his name? In a Spider-Man outfit. J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> We're wearing the Spider-Man outfit, but yeah, the Raimi trilogy, those are the best Spider-Man movies. Obviously, we got Modern Spider-Man, who's, uh... Like, I don't really care much for the Amazing Spider-Man movies, I think I've said that before. 
And the modern Spider-Man movies, I've become less and less interested in them, MCU-wise. As time goes on, I'm kind of like... I don't, like, I don't know if they're really that great. Like, No Way Home was fun because you got to see everybody come together, but it was more of like just a nostalgia kind of grab. And yeah, I, I think I like the, the new Spider-Man movies a lot less now that time has gone on and appreciate the Raimi ones even more, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, John Candy Spaceballs is really good. Uh, we got Spies Like Us, which is... Chevy Chase and Dan Aykroyd doing spies. Not very well, but yeah, that one's kind of an interesting film. It's okay. Uh, Spy Hard, which I really love. Uh, so Spy Hard, which I think I'm... Yeah, so that one's got a... What, what is his name? Uh... Yankovic, yeah, so he does like, the soundtrack for it. It's like, you've got to spy hard. And it's a Leslie Nielsen movie. And it makes fun of secret agent films. And it's pretty funny, it's ridiculous, and kind of enjoyable. And I, I quite like that one. It's a good little spoof film. That's what I'm looking for. Spoof films are kind of what he does, uh, Leslie Nielsen there. Great, great performer. True comedy legend, yeah. Hmm. Then we got our Star Wars movies, which I don't have to talk about. Stir Crazy. Stir Crazy is a lot of fun. That is another Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder combination where the two of them are in jail. And then it ends up there is like a rodeo at some point. It's, it's just ridiculous. But yeah, it's a pretty fun comedy. Stir crazy. It's it's pretty cool. I think it's a little bit more obscure that one. Yeah. Superhero movie, which is kind of a terrible spoof movie, but I kind of like it because it's ridiculous and dumb and makes fun of superhero movies from the 2000s. And uh, yeah, I got it. Oh, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes' Younger Dumber Brother, which is another Gene Wilder film. It's great. He's basically Sherlock Holmes' brother, and it's a quirky kind of comedy movie thing, and it's, it's actually got some pretty good... Like, it's got a good story to it, and some weird musical bits, and it is a very enjoyable film. And I recommend checking out if you can see that one, which is, you know, kind of great. What else we got here? Uh, more Avengers movies. Uh, the Big Year. So The Big Year is about bird watching, but it's actually really good. It's got Steve Martin with Jack Black, and they are competing against Owen Wilson to have the Big Year, which means to collect the most bird views. And yeah, it's kind of a it's, it's an easygoing kind of a little. I don't know. Feel good's the right word, but it's it's a pretty light, easygoing movie, and it's a lot of fun to watch with those guys kind of interacting with each other. So yeah, the Modern Warfare 2 2 campaign. Eh. Eh. After Modern Warfare 3 2, who really cares, right? Like the 3 2 campaign is terrible, so 2 2 kind of gets spoiled by it, I guess you would say. Uh, what else we got here? The Darjeeling Limited, so that's another Wes Anderson movie. It's about uh, three bro brothers on like a soul-searching thing in India, trying to find their mother after the death of their father, and it's quite enjoyable. It's uh, Wes Anderson, Schwartzman, and Andrew Brody, I think is his name, and yeah, they're trying to find their, their mother in India, and they're on like a train a lot of the time, trying to find her and stuff. So pretty good there. Okay, we're going pretty smoothly through it. Uh, got The Dark Knight Rises, you know, The Dark Knight, all that stuff. Uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel, which is my favorite film of all time. Great movie, Wes Anderson is peak. It's hilarious, it's emotional, it's dramatic. It's beautifully done. The cinema, the acting, the performances, uh, it's a timeless classic. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was really good. Hmm. The Grinch. Jim Carrey's The Grinch. Obviously a classic Christmas movie. Jim Carrey nails it. I like that one quite a bit. The Grinch is a great film. I quite enjoy that one. Live action, The Grinch. Uh, the Hateful Eight, which is a great uh, Tarantino film, uh, which is a bit more of a talking, tense discussion kind of movie about a group of individuals uh, sort of stuck in a snowstorm and the mystery of who and what, and it, it's shot on film, and it looks gorgeous, and it's got such a look to it, and such a style. Yeah, The Hateful Eight. Very, very good movie. I should watch that again, actually, sometimes. Great film. Hmm. Yeah. We're all good, Stu. I'm, I'm going through all the movies I have, because nobody was talking to me in the conversation for like 30 minutes, so I started going through all my movies. The original Invisible Man, which I haven't watched. The Legend of Frosty the Snowman, which is a terrible film, but I, I love it. I watch it every Christmas. The Lego movies. Be self explanatory. The Mask with Jim Carrey. Great film. He's wild. He's crazy. It's got a great looking camera ideas in it and stuff. Uh, the Naked Gun films. So the Naked Gun trilogy is awesome. You know, you get Leslie Nielsen at his. Well, I think airplanes maybe is best, but he sees this cop and it's it's ridiculous and it's funny, and it's got uh, yeah, it's, it's just great. The the Naked Gun movies are a lot of fun. The first one's the best, but they're all kind of fun and really enjoyable films. Yeah. And so are your likes on the stream. So be sure to like the stream. Subscribing's great. Donations cool. Consider becoming a channel member channel member gift, the Patreon option, the Discord for stream alerts, chatter, and okay times. There's also an Amazon store affiliate link. Grab anything on Amazon, use the link in the video description. Yeah. Okay, let's try to eat through this. The Nice Guys, which is kind of a fun combo movie of Ryan Gosling and... I'm trying to think of his name, but the two of them are kind of like a buddy action cop thing, but they're detectives and it's it's sort of funny. Uh, the other guys, pretty funny, uh, Will Ferrell and... Uh, you know that other guy, and it's funny. The other guys, they're like cops, it's ridiculous, it's silly, uh, Michael Keaton's in it, uh... Sorry, I've gone through so many people's names today, I can't even remember this guy. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Peanuts movie, really good. Oh, The Producers. Oh, yeah, that one's a lot of fun. So The Producers, the, the original one. They make a movie so terrible that it should bomb, and it's like a bit of a scam thing, but the movie becomes so successful because it's so ridiculous, and it's a great comedy, and people love it, and yeah, The Producers is really good. Man, like Russell Crowe, that's who's in the other, the, the nice guys, thank you. How many more movies do I have? Okay, I'm, I'm almost done. We're almost there. Ugh, okay. The Royal Tenenbaums, which is another Wes Anderson film about an estranged family that has to deal with each other. Uh, it's got the other Luke Wilson, the other Wilson brother. Uh, Angelica Houston's in it, and there's... It's, it's a very odd film, that one. It's it's a very, very odd uh, Wes Anderson movie, but it's, it's very much about the dynamics of a, a messed up kind of family coming together, and yes, it's very, very intriguing. I'm trying to think of his name from uh, Tropic Thunder and stuff like that. Uh, see, I've talked about so many goddamn movies and people for like three hours now, it's ridiculous. Steve Tugman, I think his name is in, uh, Ben Stiller, yeah, Ben Stiller, and he's got his kids in that movie and stuff, and then the lady they're with is, what's her name, uh, anyways, Royal Ten of Bombs was really good. The Lego Batman, oh, the Lego Batman movie was, like, so good, so, so good, yeah, that one sucks, uh, Will Arnett is, is a, strangely one of the best Batman, like, ever, yeah, Lego Batman was really, really great. 
that was Warner Brothers though. They were like getting really greedy with those Lego movies and they were pumping them out so fast. And yeah, they, they killed that. That could have been a really successful long running franchise, the Lego films. And they, uh, yeah, they got too greedy with it, which sucks, but you know, that's, that's life, right? Hmm. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Gene, what's what film is Gene Hackman in? Uh, da -da -da -da. oh god, there's so many of these. Uh, The Shining, which is obviously an incredible Jack Nicholson horror film. As much as the uh, the writer hates it, it's uh, it's Stephen King. He, as much as he hates it, uh, The Shining is uh, it's perfect horror film. It's so well done. Very very good movie. And uh, really, really quite well worth your time. It's, I mean, if you've somehow never seen The Shining, it's an all-time classic. Mm -hmm. The Wizard of Oz, classic. I guess, yeah, it'd be a musical, right? We're off to see The Wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Do -do -do -do. Dorothy and everything like that. Absolutely classic uh, Technicolor film. Beautiful, beautiful movie. We got uh, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, which I love that movie. It is ridiculous, it's corny, it's straight action, it's got great actors. It's wild, and yeah, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. And it's got the greatest ending sequence ever for a film. Oh, Gene Hackman, yeah, he's in the Royal Ten of Bombs. He's the father that's like, a bit messed up. We lost the HQ. Yeah. He's got a good performance in that one. The, uh, what would you call it? <laughs> Surprised it survived there. He's the estranged father? Yeah, that's what it is. He's the estranged father in the Royal Ten of Bombs. Great movie, yeah. I love my Wes Anderson films. Mars Attacks? Yeah, <laughs> Mars Attacks is actually pretty fun. It's kind of, like, horrific from the standpoint of, like, watching that when I was a kid or something, but, like, it's actually pretty entertaining and just the right amount of zany Mars attack. So there's a lot of films I don't have in, in my library and stuff, but uh, Mars Attacks is really good. The movie's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Headquarters. The Silence of the Lambs? Yeah, I've seen that one. Uh, the Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, which is not like a great film, but I kind of like it. It's a live action thing, and it's about youthfulness and childhood, and yeah, the Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle when they went live action. It's actually pretty faithful to the characters, too. Uh, the Comebacks, which is uh, a terrible spoof movie, but I like that it makes fun of all the sports movies, so I, I kind of enjoy the comebacks, and it's like at one point he's like, he knows all our plays, it's time to think outside of the Xbox, and he like turns off a 360 that he has on the field that's been giving him like, he's been ass maddening it the whole game, and yeah, it's, it's, I, I get a good kick out of that one, because I like uh, sports movies, so it makes fun of them. Uh, the Dead Don't Die. So this movie, people really seem to hate, but I kind of liked because it was like, really a ridiculous sort of dry satire. I, I think it was, I, I dragged like literally like my whole family, I was like, we're doing like a family movie night to go watch this film or whatever. We had to go to like this specialized theater because it's like what only plays at like smaller theaters and it was Eau Claire, which is like a terrible place to go watch movies, but they play, they watch the weird movies. It's getting bulldozed, so it's gone forever soon, but that's actually going to film festival usually that's done, so I don't know where the film festival is going to go next year, or this year, but yeah, anyways. Yeah, Fight Club for the first time? It was a really good twist, twisty movie, that one. I did not see the twist coming. Yeah. I don't know if I'd ever watch Fight Club again, because I, I don't think it'll ever be as good. I, like, I think I've seen it a few times, actually, just like on TV and stuff way back in the day, but like, that movie is never as good as the first time you watch it. It's a good movie, but like, yeah, it's, it's just, it's never... 
it's never as good the later times. Sadly. It's one of those like one and done kind of movies for me where I'm kind of like, wow, it does not get better than this and stuff. Yeah, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. What else do we got here? Yeah, but anyways, The Dead Don't Die. I love the, the theme song and stuff. And when I was, was occasionally when I would drive with my mother, we would put on The Dead Don't Die song and kind of just be like, mmm, yeah, we'd have like a joke thing around it. It was, it was kind of fun back when that came out. Uh, you need to evil the, the Doll 1919. I've never watched that. Oh, The Death of Stalin. Oh, that is a, a very, very good dark comedy. It's about literally the death of Stalin, but it's like all these British actors. And it's like they're all, they're a bunch of dumbasses trying to fight for like power, like the power vacuum that Stalin creates when he's like dead. And it, it is hilarious. Like it is, it is so funny and messed up. And it's got uh, Buscemi and like all these really good actors in it. And they don't even try to do accents or anything. It's, it's just... Yeah, it's just a bunch of like idiots trying to become the next leader of Russia. Oh my god, it's so funny. It's like it's historical too, technically. And yeah, the death of Stalin is a, a very, very good. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's great. Very great movie. Very funny. If you can handle that kind of like by satire and stuff like that. Is looking at it differently, but yeah, I don't know. If it's that, that one, Fight Club just feels one and done on that one. The Favorite? Oh, that's such a good movie. So the, the Favorite is, is Emma Stone. So if you watch Poor Things, The Favorite is the, those, the director and hers kind of first kind of go together. And The Favorite is about this woman who is, uh, it's, it's like an English, like early era kind of, I'm trying to think of the era, but I don't know. Like, Early English era, where it's like there's uh, Olivia Colman. Yeah, Olivia Colman is like the queen, and Emma Stone is like nothing, and she basically like manipulates, and the, the, it's a bit erotic too, and she basically like manipulates her way up to the uh, the top, if that makes sense, and it, it's so interesting. How she does it, and yeah, it's a great, great film. Yeah, she she starts with nothing, and she just the way she builds herself up is, is so interesting in that movie. Great, great film. That was my favorite of was it 2019 or something like that. It was, it was an incredible movie. And then obviously they came back together for Poor Things, which was really, really good last year, right? Yeah. You need to see the death of Stalin. You definitely do. It's really funny. Uh, the Fifth Element. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, Djokovic, great outfit. She's great fun in that one. Uh, obviously, uh, Brutus Willis doing a great action character. Uh, yeah, The Fifth Element. It's a great movie. A lot of fun, that one. Great. Yeah, great, good action film. Great style. We got uh, a bunch of other little miscellaneous things. The most recent Invisible Man, which I think was really good. Lego Batman, which we talked about. Uh, the Life Aquatic. So that's another Wes Anderson movie. And it's ridiculous. There's like a fight scene or shootout scene around like a, around an aquarium and stuff. Or not an aquarium, a submarine. And they have to like free Jeff Goldblum. Who's been like taken and it's just got... Bill Murray and Owen Wilson, I think competing for like the same woman or something like that, or he's, he's a strange father, and yeah, The Life Aquatic is, is very, very good, another great Wes Anderson movie. It's really neat if you watch the Wes Anderson movies in, in chronological order, because you see his like style develop over them until he just like completely embraces his style more and more in the later films. Yeah. Uh, the Man Who Knew Too Much, which is pretty fun. The Mighty Ducks, which is a bit of a classic hockey film if you're into that one. The Predator. I don't know why I have that on there. The Raven, which I never watched. The Red Shoes, which I never watched. Secret Life of Walter Mitty, which is a really good Ben Stiller movie about the fantasy of the work, like the escape of the fantasy of the work life. I really like that one. 
Walter Mitty. Uh, the Truman Show, which I think is Jim Carrey's best performance. Uh, yeah. It's about a man that's adopted by, like, a TV network, and his entire life is filmed, and he doesn't know, and it's a great drama. It's very beautiful, very well-done film, and a bit of a romantic one, too. The Woman in Red, which is a Gene Wilder, if I'm not mistaken, film, where he's seeking this beautiful woman that wears a red dress and stuff, and it's okay. The Incredibles, uh, easy one, the Little Mermaid classic, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, obviously a Christmas movie where I wrap presents every year, The Wolverine, which I like a lot more than everyone else seems to, which is interesting, but The Wolverine was pretty good, I thought. Uh, your Thors, uh, your Tomb Raiders, uh, Top Secret, which I don't like as much as everyone else seems to. The underwater aquatic fight scene is incredible, but like I, that one's another parody of... I guess action spy films. I yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't. Maybe I'll have to rewatch at some point. I don't get I don't Top Secret as much as everyone else does. The Lighthouse. Yeah, I love The Lighthouse. That movie's freaking awesome. I love that one. The Lighthouse is so good. We're almost done. Transformers the movie, obviously a classic. Tropic Thunder, great satirical movie that I think still funny as hell today. Uh, Willy Wonka with Gene Wilder. Oh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Ah, that one's really good. Very, very good movie. Yeah, so that's kind of like all the animated characters come together for this like murder mystery stuff. Yeah, Who Framed Roger Rabbit is really, really good. Yeah. WandaVision. Yeah, WandaVision kind of felt like the Truman Show and then it completely fell apart. What We Do in the Shadows, that one's really fun. Oh, I accidentally skipped ahead of some movies. Yeah, What We Do in the Shadows is a fun documentary style comedy about vampires and stuff. A Weekend at Bernie's, where basically these two kids try to keep this, like, dead body guy going through a whole weekend. It's ridiculous and kind of enjoyable. Uh, we got Turbo Kid, which I really, really loved. I'd have to re-watch that one, because I think I was too easy on it, maybe. But it's, like, this guy and this gal in this apocalypse, and it's, like, really gory and weird, and the two of them are, like, together, and... Yeah, it's called Turbo Kid. I, I really like that one. Really, really like that one. Uh, Valerian. Which, the two leads aren't the best, but I, I kind of like Valerian. It's it's okay. <gasps> We're almost done. Uh, Wings 1927, which I haven't actually watched, but need to. Uh, Xanadu. I love me some Xanadu. So Xanadu is about opening a club, but there's some cosmic elements to it. And apparently a lot of people think it's terrible. It's a musical. It's one of the later performances by Gene Kelly, and it makes me depress it, depressed seeing him in it because I remember him being so young and exciting in all of his uh, older kind of comedies, and in this one he's like kind of the old guy that's kind of to the side, and yeah, it's 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 a great one. Xanadu. Oh, Yarny's Yule Log, where you know Yarny's in front of the Yule Log. Yes, man, which is a very fun comedy, very funny, very 2000s comedy movie with Jim Carrey. And a romantic lead is kind of too young for him, but uh, Zoe De Chanel, she's beautiful in that film. We can talk about Costco and yeah, that one's really good. I like Yes Man. We're almost done, guys. It's almost over. Uh, young Frankenstein, which is a hilarious Gene Wilder movie about Frankenstein or Frankenstein, and uh, yeah, it's a Mel Brooks film. It's hilarious if you've never seen it. It's so good. Zara, which I haven't seen from 1923, and then uh, Zombieland and Zootopia, the last one. Zombieland, obviously, fun comedy, zombies, and Zootopia, I really like that animated film. And obviously there's many, many, many other movies, but I don't all have them all in one spot and everything like that, and there you go, that's, that's kind of my movie library, and I haven't added to it in several years, and I should really get into it again, and I hope you enjoyed talking about movies for like two and a half hours. So there you go. Be quick. There you go. That's what you get when you let your heart win. <sighs> and to think this all spurred from me not having anyone to talk to in the stream for like half an hour. There we go. And I had to come up with something. All my movies. 
I did it. It's time to throw this in the sky best of streams. And time to redo that thumbnail. But anyways, uh... I guess thanks for letting me talk your ear off for however long you were watching and going over all these films. And as I said, there there are many, many, many more movies out there, and these are just the ones I kind of have on hand and in the library and stuff. And, uh, hopefully you found something new to watch and stuff like that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, these are just the movies on hand. There's also like a bit of physical 4Ks and all this other stuff. And yeah. HQ is online. Capture the objective. We're capturing the HQ. Set secure. Enemy Overwatch Hilo inbound. Hmm. Near your position. Enemy UAV active. Anyways, films are great. Movies are great. So is liking the stream. <gasps> Subscribe and great donations. Cool. Consider becoming a channel member. Channel member gifting, the Patreon option, the Discord for stream alerts, and the Amazon store affiliate link. Grab anything on Amazon, use the link in the video description. I think I almost was talking about romantic trauma through the whole stream. <sighs> Tell us all the games I own? Yeah, no, no thanks. <laughs> Like 500 Steam games, it's like a few hundred on PlayStation, a few hundred on the Switch. Four thousand? How many do I have on Xbox? Like three, four thousand or something like that? Let's take a look. It's not gonna load. It's not gonna load. Oh, 3743, but I have access to 4026. Their payments to serve to live to. <laughs> there was a freak accident in the cloning facility, and Bateman has come back as multiple Batemans. Two Batemen, two Furious. Is it funny that I'm kind of out of games to do videos on on Series X? Isn't that crazy? Because while I own that many, not all of them are worth necessarily doing videos for and stuff, but. Yeah. I think I've done a pretty good, j like, damn job covering Xbox over the last few years in regards to, like, covering practically everything. I like to think I provide, like, a service, honestly. Yeah. That's why I'm always so scared of my library disappearing. I have a lot more to lose than others. A lot more to lose. Now my voice is strained and dead from talking all night. I'm hit. Too many films. But not enough. I love that they have little gravestone emotes that works perfectly with the Xbox shove between those. It's kind of funny. I wonder if Mitchell's skating right now. Oh no no, he said he was doing an 8 hour off he was off for eight hours. So probably be back in the morning skating. The world's longest hockey game. For the children's hospital. I hope they hit their goals and raise the money. I need to grab myself a 50-50 ticket too from that. I mean I already donated, but you know. They have like a silent auction and like a 50-50 thing. Gotta get me a 50-50 ticket. Does the other team not care about the headquarters? I mean, they got lots of kills, but they're not playing the position. That's weird. Headquarters. Oh no, they're actually ahead 113th. I joined in late on this game or something? This is weird. Never mind, I guess the other team is beating us. That guy's over there, Sherry. I think the fox's uncomfortable balls gets in the way of it being able to shoot. 
Capture the objective. We're securing the headquarters. Enemy movement. Cherry, no. I didn't fill my jug. I only half fill my jug. I never fully fill it. Yeah, I only do half fills. It allows me to monitor how much I'm drinking in a day. Yeah. Water is always important, guys. Stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. Wonder, did they nerf this uh, hurricane at some point? I feel like it's it's still a good, but it feels a little less deadly recently. Like it used to be able to get like three kills per like mag, and now it feels like that's been lowered a bit. Let's see, get just the sweet spot with it. Just a sweet spot. I can capture the objective from up here? Why? Okay. All it takes is one good good grenade and I'm screwed. Here we go. Oh, they both went after me. Where were my friends? You have fun, Veylander, in your old age. Fox dude needs comfy pants. Yeah, it seems to, right? Hmm. I try to learn and help people on my streams and in life, I guess. It doesn't get you far, but you know, something to do with you. Although I have learned that being friendly doesn't really get you ahead very often, but sometimes it does. Most of the time it doesn't. So keep that in mind too, guys. Other people will step over you to get ahead. Survival of the fittest of the book snacks. But try to be nice, but always understand that others will take advantage of you when they can. More wise words. Alright, let's try to get the lead here if we can. We're down by, oh, down by like 50. That's going to be pretty hard to come back on, but we'll see what happens. Damn it, I got sniped. Hmm. I'm actually looking forward to sleeping tonight. These are like chillax out. Nice and cozy. Switching mags. Oh, why did I go down here? We gotta get back up. I always forget that that area is so cut off. You think they would have like modernized some of the maps a little bit? Cause like. I don't know how to describe it. A lot of these levels are pretty classic, but like some of these Modern Warfare 2 maps, they don't hold up the best because they weren't designed for like the speed and the movement of the modern era. And uh, yeah, they, they get a little awkward. Like Subbase, Modern Warfare 2, enjoyable. Subbase, Modern Warfare 3 2, Ugh, awful, terrible. Same with Invasion, and yeah. Some of the maps just don't work well in the modern era. Like, I think yours has it, right? They bring back old maps, but they open them up because the movement's so much faster nowadays. Hmm. No, it doesn't, Stu. It just gets you taken advantage of.
like weirdly quiet. Okay. Why is it so weirdly quiet capturing this? This is very strange. Ooh, Sherry died right on the respawn disable. That's rough. Yeah, it's like weirdly silent. Close one. That was that was very close actually. Dribble kill. They actually destroy that or did we get the full amount? That was really good. That was a very good headquarters hold. See that guy sniping all the way over there. Crap. Yeah, it'll take more to cream your corn. I've almost got the SAE. That guy literally, like, walked into my bullets. <laughs> it was totally safe if he would have just kept hiding there. I'm gonna let the SAE go by so I don't bomb myself. I feel like with the amount of kills and stuff I have, I should be closer to, like... You know, like a gunship, you would think, right? They got the HQ. How? How did they get the HQ? There's a guy sniping over here. There's two guys up there. There's one more. Can I like climb the other way or are they gonna know I'm coming? Ah, I wanted the gunship! The movement's faster. I think it's just because they make the games faster. That's why I think the movement's faster, but yeah, I'm sure it's too. Missed you in the chat, ma'am. It's always funny. Hmm. There's me getting killed. I was on my way towards a gunship. We lost a match, too. Oh. Oh, that makes me sad. That makes me sad. The total eclipse of the heart. 44, so we're at 44 on the battle path. Oh, ho, ho, look at us go. We're almost halfway done the battle pass. We're only a couple streams in. This is incredible. Look at me go. I'm battle passing my way to victory. Nice. I think this is the fastest progression we've ever had in a battle pass. Is Gears, Fultz, and Halo really coming to PlayStation? I mean, eventually, yeah. Is it official? No, but well, it's coming. See if Thieves is doing really well. This is only the pre orders. Yeah. The weird music they play nowadays. Find me a goddamn match. So I'm saying the matchmaking takes forever in this game. Ugh. Headquarters on Favilla? 
I don't really want to do either of these maps, actually. Let's back out and restart that search. We'll just we'll do a horde point mimic, I think. Yeah, I think that's a better idea. Horde point mimic. That's what we'll do. Hmm. Do, 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 Dead game. Well, the stupid matchmaking in this game makes it so that it's so slow to find a match. The game knows we have the Sherry advantage and it does not like it. Hmm. Is this why they added the, the theme music for the menus? Is for when you're waiting like nine minutes to get into a game? Ah. <laughs> uh, that's kind of funny. Do, 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 do. Like, it shouldn't even take that long. Like, I don't know why there's skill based matchmaking like this in Horde Point of all things. You're just going around shooting zombies and stuff. I don't want a competitive time, I want a fun time. Look, our lobby's like split in half already. You know, you take that long to matchmake and they all kind of disappear. Is that Gary the... the snail from Spongebob? I think that's Gary the snail from Spongebob in the chat. Finally, we're maybe going to load into a match. Holy. Oh, I feel like I've been sitting here for like an hour. <laughs> Trying to get into a lobby. You know what I mean? Like on a weekend too? It's crazy. There's a chef? Oh yeah, I forgot they added the let them cook guy. See that? He's just a cook. Hmm. The Series X and S are doing better? They're actually selling less than the Xbox One did at the same time. They're not looking pretty good. Well, at least Gary the Snail's here. That builds high levels of confidence for myself. I know with Gary, we can get it done. I don't know what we're getting done, but we can get it done. Yeah. The lonely zombie. Damn it. I don't know why I was wasting ammo like that, anyways. They were gonna add guns okay. to this? I thought Godzilla was supposed to be coming, but I haven't even seen it yet. a lot of points actually being in here. The Hell's Kitchen guy? You talk about Chef Ramsay? That would be funny, actually. Strangely enough, I can actually see them doing that. Nothing is off the table anymore, I don't think. Nothing. Zombies here, use them as uh, you know cover and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Stand by. 
I love, yeah, I use the zombies as like distractions, it's great. I think this is what that one zombie shooter game was trying to achieve. And, uh, never was able to. I can't remember what that zombie shooter game was called, but it wasn't very good. But I think this is what they were kind of going for. Dead Alliance? I think it was called Dead Alliance. Build better than the Xbox One and stuff? I, I guess it's really, we have to wait and see, but the design of the Series X and the S is very, very, the ingenuity there is really great. Yeah. It's impossible to tell longevity when we're only a few years in, right? And we're only a few hours in of asking for your likes on the stream. Dog 2. Not to be confused with Snoop Dog 1. Oh, that guy didn't die? What the hell? I would have thought with my teammate taking a chunk out of his shoulder, only a few bullets would have killed him, but nope. You love the sniper slaughter. You're one of them. Uh, the snipers are annoying. I don't know why they always have to ruin COD by adding weird silly things that people don't want. Except for those annoying people to take advantage of things. Oh, there's a guy in that corner there. What is he doing over in the spot? Such a dramatic death. <sighs> Overlay dramatic. PS5? In this economy? Yeah, it's a nice console. Target area updated. Move to the hard point. I like that there's no fire here so I don't burn my feet. <laughs> Somehow the apocalypse has cleaned up the, uh, the Skid Row environment quite a bit. Say that to the zombies? Uh, we are not on the same side as zombies. Nice. Anyways, guys, I think that's good for tonight. I had a great time. Thanks for jumping in, Sherry. The Sherry advantage is always appreciated. Great battle pass progression, great battle pass unlocks. A best of talking about the movie library out of necessity. Y'all have a great one out there. I'll catch you around for something who knows what tomorrow.